and welcome to this session. I think we'll start immediately. Good afternoon, <laughs> good morning, good evening, wherever yeah, you are. <laughs> and we have Zaid again in this uh, series of amazing things that he does with us. Um, my name is Irene Maweo um, from Image Africa, and uh, we will start. Um, okay, yeah. maybe I should start um, uh, share my. I think what I'll do is you share your 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 um, uh, as you share your your screen. I'm just going to okay. tell them something about you. Yes, is that okay? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> we don't we don't have to, we, uh, we'll take our time. It's, it's supposed yes, to be fun. Yes, we take our time. I tell them something <laughs> about you. Yeah, we are here. That's what counts. So we are happy to have Zaid uh, Ali um, as a golf. Uh, who is a learning innovative specialist with over 15 years experience in tertiary and corporate education, is the founder and CEO of AQL Learning Innovation uh, Consultancy, which provides training and consultants in learning innovation, drawing, visual note-taking, educational technology, memory improvement, speed, smart reading and thinking skills, and much more. I can tell you it's much more than that. So we are so happy to have you. Uh, we we are so blessed to have you uh, join the Image Africa family. And today we are in the series of his amazing things. So I hope you are ready for the next one and one hour and a half. And uh, over to you, uh, Zaid. And thank you. Okay. Okay. Good morning and good afternoon. I think there are some from India and there are some from Malaysia. I know for sure. And of course, every good morning to everyone and good afternoon uh, to all Muslims. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think before I even start, uh, you have three options. You'll, you'll be asked to draw a bit today, if that's okay. Uh, at least, can you, do you have any, uh, if you have some paper and pens, it would be nice. If you have something more like uh, uh, a, a kind of a welcome board and a draw, or if you have an iPad or if you have a phone and a stylus, uh, it's good, but something, but we're good to draw a bit because I think you can't learn anything about vision or taking if you don't practice a bit of your drawing in the process. So, can I please uh, get in the chat room that you have something that just say why or yes that I have something because it won't be fun if you don't do any drawing. I mean, the, the whole point of vision or taking is that you draw and you should not worry so much about the drawing itself. Uh, is that okay? Can you just say get a yes? Everybody has a, can I just get a yes? I know that you're there in in the chat room. Okay, everybody has something to draw with. <laughs> it doesn't matter because uh, the most important vision note taking is that you take your vision notes and it makes sense to you. Uh, unless you want to share it to others, then it should make sense to others also. Paper and a pen is enough, more than enough. If you want to use, uh, we'll talk about digital drawing. I will talk about digital while, but the most important today is about visual note taking and that requires you to write and draw. Okay. Uh, since we, since I'm going to shorten it a bit, because I don't want to take your time, because so, we were supposed to finish uh, in two hours, so we have gone one half an hour already. So we'll finish in one half hour, hopefully, or maybe before. Um, but before I start, uh, let's just have some fun first. Let's just have some fun first. I don't know if you see my screen. Let me just share. I, I, I'm going to share a link in the chat box and I want you to write on this whiteboard. There's something called sticky notes here uh, and write uh, what you know about uh, 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 visual note taking, if you know anything. So at least I know what you know and maybe what you can write in your, there what you want to learn about or anything about visual noting if you know anything. So at least I know the level of participant visual note taking is. I'm just giving you an example. Uh, so I'm doing, you can see here, I hope you can see my screen. Uh, I share the link in the chat and you can draw if you want is uh, okay so I, I allow you to have fun on the jam board it's a, it's a Google product it's fun uh, so everybody can go to that link and everybody should be able to edit and if you can add sticky notes sticky notes is on the left side here you can see a sticky note and write something about vision note taking that you know or something that you want to know and then at least we can get it going and a more active process Okay, so I don't see anyone. You can draw if you want, if you, <laughs> if you feel like drawing. Let's uh, loosen up a bit, okay? You see, if you want to draw, you can draw also. But it's not easy to draw with a mouse. Link not valid. Okay, let me try again. Huh? 
and let me just share again. I, I see some people are here, so the link should be quite valid. So I don't not sure. Let me just share again. Uh, the link. Can you edit or not? Let me just change. Yeah, if it's, you cannot edit, yes. Anyone with the link can edit. Okay. Okay. I see somebody started drawing. The uh, sticky notes is on the left side. It's the first, second, third, fourth. You can click on the sticky note. You can write something, and then you can save. You can change the color. So, or you can just write there. But I'm not sure how to put the text in there. Okay, something, something want to know. So it's everybody's having fun drawing, loosening up. It's one thing about drawing, you have to have fun. Okay, new to this concept. Okay, let me just move the sticky notes. I think we got one sticky notes. New to this concept. Okay, visual note taking. I think everybody has taken notes in their life, but maybe not everybody has used so much visuals. Okay. Uh, here we have the, uh, I'm terrible at drawing. I hope after this workshop, I can improve my drawing skills. Okay. Yeah, I hope so. A drawing is not uh, take uh, visual notes creatively and interestingly okay i've got some here some notes good no idea okay great <laughs> any other ideas here okay i can see somebody is happy drawing here let's find out who's drawing can i find out who this guy is uh, <laughs> just have fun <laughs> raising his stuff okay uh anyone else want to write anything else before we start okay i'll leave this jam board here uh you can keep on okay so we got another one a visual representing what you learn through a visual. Okay, fine. Uh, so that's a description. I'm not sure who's saying this, so if I, but we'll find that out. But we can continue in the chat room. Uh, this is just Jamboard. Jamboard is actually a very good brainstorming tool. Also, if you have, uh, you want to come up with great ideas and so on. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my slides, uh, and we're here. And somebody is drawn here. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you, how many of you? Say that you, let's do it positive. Can you say, I can draw? Yes or no? Just put yes or no. I can draw. I can draw is yes. If I cannot draw, no. <laughs> Are you confident in your drawing? Especially for teaching. Think about as a teacher, you're a teacher. You go on the whiteboard. You want to draw an elephant or something. <laughs> I can draw stick stick people. Okay, sick, not stick. Okay, stick people. <laughs> sick people. I can draw some. Okay, I understand. Stick stick figures. Yes, yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah, we'll look at actually stick figures is good enough for uh, teaching and learning uh, in the classroom usually unless you're doing uh, anatomy and so on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're gonna have a little. What is this? Wait. Wait. Let me just go back here. There's something here. Wait. 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 So there's something. I don't know why this. Somebody drew. Did I draw something here? What? Why is this line here? Wait. Uh, because someone tried to un un annotate, so we need to shut that down. Okay, so how do you do that? Huh? Um, can, can, can I can <clears throat> I can explain? I stop sharing. I stop sharing. Then you take away. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's 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 like I can do that without you worrying about it. Okay, okay. Can you yeah. take it away the liner? Yes. I got the line. Okay, okay. Yes. Thanks. Okay, yeah, great, yeah, yeah. great. Okay. Please don't okay. draw. Don't entertain. Uh, otherwise, it, it throws people off. Here. Thank you. Okay, let's have a. Are you ready for a little drawing test? I had a drawing test in my first class, and I'm going to have another drawing test. Are, do you have your pen ready and the paper, or your stylus and iPad? Everybody, are you ready? <laughs> okay. While you're drawing, I want you to guess what you're drawing. Eh? You have to have some fun. I'm not even going to tell you what you're drawing, but you're going to be able to draw something very nice when you finish. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's start. Okay. I want you to draw this first. Can you draw this or not? Uh, the last line there, you can, this line not to worry so much, but just draw this. Let me just go back a bit. Okay, can you draw this or not? Can you guess what this is? Can anybody guess what this is? <laughs> uh, anyway, but keep on drawing. I think you can draw this. I hope you can draw this. I think you can draw this. Uh, I wish I could, if it was a live class, I usually have a gift for the, I don't have to give an online gift, it's a bit boring, but uh, yeah, I usually have an award for the ones that can guess correct. Head part of a man, okay, <laughs> it's not that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it could be part of a head, yes, yes, that's definitely, yeah. Okay, okay, keep on drawing. I want you to draw until, okay. Okay, I'm going to add a bit more. Now you should guess what it is. Okay, can you draw this? Okay. <laughs> okay. 
How is it going? Maybe after this, we can show each other's drawing on the paper. It would be fun to do a video. Uh, leave it to your Aaron to take a screenshot. <laughs> Nobody can guess what you're drawing, eh? Let's go a bit more. Are you ready for a bit more? Okay. Now you should know who you're drawing, but anyway. <laughs> Here's our rabbit. Okay. If you, you should know who you're drawing now. By now you should know. Uh, if, if it was a guessing game of a drawing game, it, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> That's not Mickey Mouse. Oh, okay, Lucy says Donald Duck. Yes, correct. You're drawing Donald Duck. Let's see how well you can draw Donald Duck. Let's continue your drawing. Okay, you can see the line there. You can see the line here. This line here, yeah. Be interesting to see you see your drawing Donald Duck. Okay, I'll draw a bit more. I'm going to draw two dots there. Two dots here. You can see two dots here. And then I'm going to draw the eyebrows. Okay. Lucy, you deserve a award. Huh? I don't know how to award you, but we'll maybe find a way to award you later. Okay, and then I draw the, I'm drawing the hat here, you can see here. If I'm going too fast, just uh, put yes, sir. Huh? Okay, I'm drawing the hat here. That's a nice little uh, hat here. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to draw a bit more. You can see the size of the head here. Okay. <laughs> and then I, I look, I'm actually, it's not so organized, but I'm drawing, you can see the around there. Okay, yeah. What I'm actually showing you is that if you start analyzing drawings, a uh, bit, bit critical thinking, you can draw anything actually. You need to know how to start, where to start and have fun with it. I have so many ex exercises like this. I, I realize people can draw the most amazing thing if you just give them a bit guidance of where to start and how to let it go. Okay, how's it going? <laughs> okay, so now you've done the hat. Okay, you, you have the face. There's a bit more to add to it. Okay. Can you see here? There's another layer. Okay, you can see there's another. He's angry. This is angry adult duck. He's always angry, right? You can see that I added another layer here. You can see another layer. Oy, oy, oy. Okay. Oy. Okay. And then you you finish the the hat here. And then you add you darken the eyes black. Okay. So, and then I, I'm just going to show you, don't have to color it, but if you're using digitechnology, it's very easy to color. It takes a few seconds. You just need to splash it. You can see here, and it becomes Donald Duck. Okay. I'm going to let it be there for 10 seconds. And then I want you, everyone, what we can do is, we, I'll make a big screen. Uh, I, Irene, also, you make a big screen. And we can share our drawings. Let me just take 10 seconds to draw it myself now to prove that I can draw it also. Let's see if I can draw it fast. Okay, I'm drawing it now in less than 10 seconds. Eh? My version is not so nice. I'm not going to draw a perfect one, but I'm going to draw an, a cool one. Yeah. Mm. I'm drawing it myself, so at least I know. Uh, Okay, if you want to have the neck, you don't have to draw the whole body because sometimes the draw the body takes a bit of time. Okay, okay. So let's uh, share our drawings on the screen. Wait, let me just do a full screen. We can. Uh, uh, I'm going to stop sharing now, and then we can share. Let's do a how can we, gallery. Ah, okay. Can if you can switch on your video now, it'll be fun, and just share your drawings.
Uh, look at that iron, it's very nice. <laughs> I just did a quick one here. You can see, uh, not so nice, but okay. Uh, but I've drawn it so many times. For me, I can, okay. Yeah, nice. Anyone else show the down look? Look at that. Wow, look at that. Even colored it. Zakia colored it. Very nice. I'm using the Azizi, you're an artist. Come on, show you our artwork. Oh, look at that. Helinga, okay. I didn't. Uh, Feke, Feka, Feka. Ah, nice. If, if we can all <laughs> leave them, then I can take a screenshot of everybody. Yeah, we, 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 give, we give 10 seconds to everybody to show the nice yeah. down duck. Look, but you see how well this is the first time Lucy's drawing down duck. Is this your first time? It's actually awesome. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Chamberlain, nice. Chamberlain, where are you? Let's see. <laughs> Don't be worried about your drawing. It's a good effort. Oh, nice. Look at that. It's not easy to draw online, but okay, good, good. Okay. Uh, wait, wait. I saw Zakia has actually used digital technology, so uh, uh, he has managed to color it. Zakia, I'm not sure he's a female or male. I think he's a male. Okay, man. Okay, Colbert, nice cow. Okay, who else has drawn? Uh, everybody's scared to show. Let's see uh, somebody else's. Uh, Anybody else want to show their drawings? We have <laughs> so, but you see how well you draw down like the first time. Uh, if you can draw that the first time, can you imagine what you can do for Walt Disney in a few years' time? <laughs> okay, so you managed to get seven of you. Thank you very much for participating. But see, it's not so difficult to draw. Uh, okay. So the thing is, this is what I did. Actually, I did for one or two months. I just spent learning how to draw Walt Disney cartoons from memory. I think one of the tricks of drawing is not just to draw things, but is to draw things from memory. Because once you draw from memory, uh, you force your, your thinking to a much higher level from my own experience. So. Okay, let's go back here. Okay. So thank you very much. I'm sure some of you draw but not happy with the drawing. It's okay. Uh, the most important is that you try it. Because drawing is, is, it, drawing is important for everyone for, for self-consumption, but maybe for sharing to others, it's different. Okay, let me just do, uh, can everybody see my screen? Uh, let me just, uh, I need to get the chat open. Where's the chat now? Uh, okay. Okay, the chat. Okay, yes, 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 okay. I can see here the drawing again. This one, I just recorded myself drawing on, I used, uh, I used my iPad Pro, uh, and I don't know if you can see me in the small screen. I draw using this one, iPad Pro and as uh, Apple Pencil. But uh, you don't need to have Apple and all products. This is, people that say that's nonsense. You can, drawing you can use on any tablet with a stylus, or you can even use a few, uh, even like 20, 30 dollars, US dollars, you can buy a, this kind of pad, which you can connect to the computer, and, and this kind of stylus, and you can run, draw on the computer. It's not that easy, but it's very good for teaching and learning if you're having a class and you want to use the whiteboard and so on. Okay, so now you can draw an old duck. But the trick is, okay, you watched me draw. That's fine. But what the, the magic of drawing is learning how to draw things and developing your visual vocabulary. To do that, you just need to draw it. From my own experience, if I draw something, the same thing eh, for five, six, seven times, it becomes a, an eternal memory and I do it for a few times over a period of time. It sticks like water. And I think as a teacher, it's very important to develop, to draw things relevant to your subject. If you're teaching about, uh, about health, maybe you can draw items relevant to health. If you're teaching about business, you learn how to draw houses, you know, equity, money, and all those kind of things. So you can visualize your teaching. And at the same time, also, you can visualize your slides and notes, okay? Okay, so this is the output, okay? Uh, okay, so there are a few things that you need to know. I've, I did this, if you attended my first drawing workshop, it's the same thing, but the three rules that I, I really like, I didn't invent them, but somebody came, I can't remember who came up with them, maybe modified a bit. Okay, the first rule is, just, the first rule is, everyone can, what is this, everyone can? Can everybody put in the, <laughs> in the chat box, everyone can? Not everyone can paint like the Leonardo da Vinci, but uh, you know, I mean, for teaching and learning, your drawings don't have to be very complicated. Actually, it's supposed to be as simple as possible. So anybody can draw. Everyone can draw, but not everyone can be an artist, maybe, but everyone can draw, at least for, for teaching and learning purposes. What's that? Progress comes with? Progress comes with? I think this is very important. 
a lot of people think I cannot draw and I said have you tried drawing no <laughs> you have to practice a bit yes practice thank you very much everyone Dolly I, everybody knows that okay Carl Dolly and all that yes uh, Chamberlain practice yeah so if you practice and you still say you cannot draw I, I can relate to you but if you say you cannot draw but you don't even try of course that any skill you have to practice a bit at least to to get some benefit from it okay and the, this is the most important this is the one that kids always get right but grown-ups mostly get wrong when they want to learn a new skill they don't know you have to have fun with it and a lot of people are very stressed with the drawing you know they they come to me they tell me, i cannot draw but, and, and they're really stressed they're so scared to show their work but if you feel that you cannot draw you have nothing to worry about because you already said yourself you cannot draw so, but anyway, but I think you have to have fun with it, right? Have fun with what? Have fun. <laughs> uh, Debayan De asked me, what are the tricks? The tricks for what? The draw is a lot of tricks. But I think the most thing is just to have fun with it and realize the power of it. I'm going to share with you today on visual note taking, but I'm going to, uh, for two minutes, I'm actually going to explain the power of drawing for brain development, especially for kids and all that. Uh, there's a lot of trend now to, to apps to do drawing. But one of the things I really don't like is to teach kids early on just tracing because tracing is a brainless activity. It's okay to do. You get excited, but you need to go more. I'll tell you why later, why tracing is good to do later, but not in the beginning. Because you saw now you could draw Donald Duck without tracing. You just draw Donald by just looking at what I'm saying and then you draw on a piece of paper. Okay. So thanks, thanks Akash for enjoying it. Okay. So everyone can draw. Okay, we, we, we assume that at least for teaching and learning and innovation. Progress comes with practice. So even if you're bad at drawing, a bit more practice, you can do it. And the last one is have fun. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. I find it very weird why, uh, maybe they were, uh, as a child, the teacher scolded them on the drawing or the parents say don't draw because you have to study. I don't, something with drawing, especially in Asia, I find it very weird. A lot of people have a lot of bad experiences <laughs> with drawing. I don't know in Africa, but I know in Asia, I've trained now, I don't know how many, quite a lot. And then the same issue comes up again. They're, they're really stressed when they, when they draw. Enjoy it. Okay. Okay. And before I go on to vision note taking, okay, I'm going to, okay, let's do this. This is quite fun, actually. I want to give you some time. Okay. I'm going to give, I did this last time. This is a fun game that you can practice drawing in a fun way. I'm going to put the link here. You can try the game now and you can draw on your, on your computer or your stylus or whatever. You can draw with your finger on your phone. I put the link there, Dre. I'm going to show you how it works. I'm just going to stop uh, sharing. And I, hey, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm already sharing the screen. Sorry, sorry, let me just share. Uh, uh, hey, okay, sorry. I'm going to share again. I'm going to share my screen, okay. And I'm going to go to the website and I'm going to add the link, okay. One more thing, I'm going to add the link. You can see here. It's actually a game, huh, which is quite cool. It's, it's done by Google. It uses pattern, pattern recognition to guess. It asks you to draw something and it will guess what you're. So let's, I'll just show you the game. You can try it out and see how many you can do. This is a great way of simplifying drawing because you only have 20 seconds to draw what it asks you to draw. So let's start. I'm supposed to draw a paintbrush in under 20 seconds. Got it. So when I start drawing now, when I start drawing, I draw the paintbrush. I hope it's, it, and it will start guessing what I'm, hey. Ah, so you guessed correctly, a brush. Raccoon, okay, what does a raccoon look like? Okay, so I'm gonna to try to draw a raccoon very quickly. I don't know what that looks like anyway. <laughs> what is that? What is, uh, I don't even know what it's. <laughs> Zebra. <laughs> you maybe guess it wrong. So if this is a fun game just to have fun. See, I know I'm not getting it right. I can't remember the raccoon. <laughs> no clue what <laughs> Okay, somebody's annotating. I think please take away the annotation. Okay, next game. You can try out the game. I give you the link. You try it out. Uh, fork. So I, okay, so I tried to draw. Okay, undo. Okay, let. Uh, bottle cap. So draw, bottle cap. So you just keep on drawing, having fun with. Okay, tornado. It's tornado. A pickup truck. Okay, let's just draw a pickup truck. What does a pickup truck look like? Okay, cooler. What's a cooler? Draw a cooler. So, okay, so you can. What was a cooler? Oh, a skyscraper. <laughs> I don't know. What is a cooler? I can't remember. What does a cooler look like? 
Ah, I just draw something anyway. Okay, so then, then you can actually see. So you have six drawings. You can see what what is the what do people are. This is looks like cooler toaster camera. <laughs> so this is what a cooler can look like. Okay, ice, ice. Okay, like a fridge. Okay, okay, okay. Or okay, so you can have fun checking other people's drawing. Actually, the tool uses artificial intelligence and tries to pattern recognize your drawing compared to other people drawing the same thing, and then guess correctly. So that's when we talk about drawing whether you can draw. That's a good enough drawing if the computer can guess what you're drawing is good enough for teaching it also. <laughs> okay, so that's you can have fun with that one. Uh, even if I'm boring, you can you can play the game while while listening to me also. Okay, so before we go back to the next again, I would like to ask you again. Uh, if you have played the game, if you not played the game, tell me how many correct you got out of six. Okay, Akash got five correct. Great. Okay, you can play the game. It'll get different items to draw, so it's, it's not the uh, same thing. So this is fun. So this is a good game to practice your quick drawing. Because in the end of the day, when you teach, you're not going to be able to do complicated things. Lucy got five out of six also. Great. Um, if, if you did something particularly wrong, can you share what you did wrong or you didn't get it? Or? <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Why is my... I don't know why my chat keeps on disappearing when I go full screen. I still need my chat. Okay, there's my chat. Okay, there. Uh, no time to draw a panda. <laughs> it depends on what you're drawing. If you're drawing with your mouse, like I was drawing, or uh, you need a stylus or something uh, to draw, it's not easy to draw with the mouse. Uh, but it's fun. It's a fun game. It's an innocent game. Uh, but just to let let loose and drawing. Okay, Lucy had problem drawing a power outlet. Okay, it's a good try. But anyway, yeah, at least you tried. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share. Yeah, Irene, yeah, as you said, it's a good icebreaker. It's a brilliant icebreaker for letting loose, especially you want to be relaxed, uh, especially when you de deal with creativity, innovation, teaching, learning, and so on. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so you can see here. I don't know why my sorry my chat keeps on disappearing when. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay, so these are actually the things. Let me just go the pointer. These are the things that uh, uh, I did last workshop. I did or last webinar. We talked about drawing for learning, teaching, and innovation. Uh, the power of drawing, what it impact it can do. So I'm just going to revise that. So at least you know the power of drawing. It's not just about drawing and having a nice drawing. Actually, it impacts a lot of aspects, especially your brain, okay? So the power of drawing for kids and also teachers, but especially for kids and even older people that lack, is it, it's a powerful tool to improve your focus. It's extremely powerful and you don't even realize it because sometimes when you draw, if you start drawing, you can draw for hours and you're so into it, you forget time just flies away. In other words, it, it, it allows you to focus on something. It builds out the subconsciously, some subconsciously focus. So it's a very powerful tool to improve your focus. It's an extremely powerful to improve your memory. That's one of the reasons I'm teaching visual note taking. It's a, it's a very powerful to empower you to improve your memory. Uh, and I talked about that in the last webinar. And I'm, I probably, of course, I'll mention it now again, but it's very powerful. And of course, it's extremely powerful for thinking, to improve your thinking. So drawing can do all that. It can improve your visual thinking, your uh, critical thinking, your computational thinking, your collaborative thinking, so many parts of the thinking aspect it improves. So that's the learning part for drawing. So that can it do for you for drawing. For a teacher, if you're teaching, if you can visualize things, uh, whether it's live or it's, uh, you've done it before class or during class, it's a very powerful drawing itself or illustration is a very powerful to connect and engage the audience. And also, of course, to simplify complexity and better yet, it can, you can use as a tool to inspire students and so on, on learners. And then on the innovation process, if you look at most inventors, even cartoons, it usually starts with a sketch. So it's very important to be able to visualize and bring out your imagination and your ideas, not just in words, and also in visuals. I mean, 
how many inventions would have happened if people could not draw? I mean, most of the inventions started with the, first the idea in the head and they brought it to life in a sketch and then they start building it and so on. Even if you look at the, if you go back to the artist world today, um, I mean, not artist world, if you look at the Walt Disney and all that, they all start with storyboarding, whether it's digital storyboarding, they start very low tech. They sketch the ideas, the stories, and then they go to, uh, what do you call it, uh, into the high tech and animated and so on. But it starts usually with sketches and so on. So it's very important to learn this skill. And this is a skill I think all students should learn, uh, basic drawing skills. So it can help them in, in whether you become an engineer, you become a doctor, you become a scientist, you become a, a businessman, an innovator, an entrepreneur, a leader. If you can draw and visualize your ideas and imagination, you can probably communicate much more effectively than just in words. Okay, so it's very important just to learn the basics of drawing. Uh, that's one of the things, if you look at me, uh, these are all my drawings, uh, whether you like it or not, if you think they're good, I actually started drawing at the age, I'm 46 now, I started drawing at the age of 42, again, I mean, I stopped as a kid, as like 12 or 11 years old, I stopped, and I didn't do it for 30 years, but when I started doing research on learning skills and brain development, I rediscovered the joy for drawing as a powerful tool to do all the aspects that I'm sharing today. And of course, have fun. Innovation, drawing is very fun. You must have fun with it. And it's very fun also. That's why when you talk about innovation process, design thinking and all that, drawing is very much as a part of it when you want to draw out your ideas. It's not just writing out your ideas, you're also drawing out there. So this is the aspect that I covered in my pre previous webinar. Today, we're just going to focus on one thing, which is visual note-taking, okay? Okay. So one of the things that uh, you realize, I want to ask you now in the chat room. Let me just get the chat. My chat keeps on miss. I still have problem to get my chat visually. Okay, why is it not appearing? This is my uh, problem with Zoom. Okay, there it is. Okay, okay, everyone. I just want to ask you. Uh, how many of you get sleepy during? We now we talk about lectures, but let's talk about webinars. How many of you get sleepy in webinar during webinars, like falling asleep? We have to go and check the news or go somewhere else. Okay. Because uh, if you're just listening, uh, listening is, is, is actually one of the challenges of just listening is very little of your brain is actually activated if you just sit there and listen. Your blood circulation, your blood circulation goes down and so on. And that's one of the reasons when I used to go to lectures, because I, I worked in a medical university and I've, I've done lectures for hundreds of people at one time. Uh, a lot of people fall asleep if, they, if they're just listening. Even how good you are, if you go on for 30, 40 minutes, if they are tired, they're definitely going to fall asleep. Uh, so one of the things that uh, they have done research on is the hands. Your hands are very connected to your brain. So if you actually activate your hands, uh, it will have a major impact on how your brain is, uh, uh, the neurons are activated, different parts of the brain are being activated. Actually, the whole body should be involved in the learning process, but the hands are very significant. And even they found, it's very interesting, uh, uh, do you what do you remember more, what you type or what you write? And I've asked this question to thousands, probably more than a thousand students now. And I want to ask you in the crowd, what do you remember more? If you write your notes or you, you type your notes? Which one is more effective for you to remember when you're typing? Some people they type, 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 they type a lot, but they can't remember. Okay, Dolly prefers typing, typing your notes. You remember when you type, you remember, right. Okay, Mohan says, right. Uh, Lucy says right. Huh? Chamberlain says right. Okay, three one. Huh? I don't. I wish I had. A, I should have done a poll, but I, have, I haven't prepared any polls. Today. Okay, um, but it's very interesting when I ask the students. Huh? Uh, Akash says writing. Uh, usually, it's nearly again. Vivek says or Kaul says writing. It's nearly 80, 90 percent remember more what they write and what they type. I'm not going to go into the details because I'm not sure of the science behind it. But one of the things with typing is that although you're using all your fingers, the movement is not so, the, when you write, it's, it's a bit more movement, you're activating. But one thing is very interesting, if you can see my fingers here, your thumb, your thumb, the camera is there, okay, your thumb and your index finger are the most connected fingers to the brain. There's more neurons and, and brain activity dealt with these two fingers. That's why when you write, you, if you look at how you hold the pen, most hold the pen, it is the index finger there and the thumb. And when you type, you're actually just typing. Blah, blah, blah. So these two fingers are very central to activating your brain. This is very interesting that I found. So it's very important to use your, your, your actually, your, when you're taking notes, it has activated parts of the brain, especially the visual context and, the, and all the things that are connected to the brain that's related to your 
Tom and Enix. And these are very critical for the learning process. Uh, so actually typing is, uh, they say that writing activates more of your brain than typing. And of course drawing, what they say is actually activates the whole brain because you activate the left side and the right side. Uh, and actually for, for Muslims, uh, I was talking to some Muslim scholars, uh, Muslim scholars, and it's very interesting. They found, uh, they found, uh, when I was telling them, I was, I was talking to some Muslim scholars about what I'm doing, and he straight away related to an ayat from the, the holy book of the, for the Muslims that actually talks about this, but he didn't understand the meaning of it until he, when I talked to him, and it actually says in Arabic, uh, let me just repeat, Bismillah, which basically says, I learn uh, through writing. Uh, so, so it's not just when you learn, it's not just to listen, you have to start writing down what you learn and that will impact your learning more. And this is one of the challenges we have today is a lot of students, because the teacher gives out the handouts and they just don't bother writing. They just come to class, they listen, even when they go back, they don't even think, they just memorize the notes, sit for the exam. Uh, so it's actually a very passive way of learning, uh, but taking your own notes is very critical to activate uh, the learning process. And, and, I just want to ask you, are you in, in South Africa? And do you, are you very much using, I'm probably I, all of it, Bloom's taxonomy in the learning process? When you want to do assessment and prepare activities, you follow Bloom's taxonomy up to the highest level, which is either synthesis and creating and analyzing, evaluating, application, and so on. Do you follow Bloom's taxonomy? Is that very part of your learning process? Can I ask you? Uh, yeah, so Bloom's, Eroto or Bloom? Actually, if you think about it logically, especially visual note-taking, if students are doing or teachers are doing visual note-taking, it is actually activating the whole Bloom's taxonomy. You're going everything from understanding, right? You're understanding, uh, you're analyzing. Uh, I don't know how, you're applying in the sense that you're trying to understand what you're learning, how it's being applied. And then you're synthesizing, you're bringing it together from different resources and summarizing it into one place. And then the visual note taking place, when it's visual note taking, you're also creating, right? You're visualizing in a creative way for you to remember and understand the complexity of the knowledge. So actually note taking itself is activating the full Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, so that's why it's very scary when I hear students in different, uh, uh, when I worked in and uh, many places I go, I, I focus most on teachers, but when I listen to students not taking notes, I say, you're, you're, you're killing yourself with a skill that is so critical to when you start working to take notes while you're working, but it's also the, the amount of things you learn in the process of taking notes. So they're activating the full Bloom's taxonomy. You're activating all the skills from synthesis to evaluation, to analysis, uh, to being creative if you're doing visual note taking and so on. All this is done through the process of note taking. So this is something that I think is very important to emphasize in the schools. And if you do, it's great. If you don't, maybe you should think about it. Uh, okay. So let's go back to here. Okay. So what we found is that there's something called the drawing effect. Uh, I have a link here, but uh, I'll show you later. Drawing effect is something they found out that drawing effect based on research in terms of memory is, 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 is actually interestingly, uh, it is uh, more effective to remember than just writing the words. Uh, mental imagery, just thinking about it, uh, and picture superiority is just looking at the image and trying to remember it. Just, in other words, you're drawing what you're trying to learn. It's found to be more memorable. But of course, the best that I found is something which I'll get to is the dual coding, is you write and you visualize and you draw out. Both those together is extremely powerful, okay? So this is my drawing on visual note taking, which is the, what do you call it, for, the, for this uh, workshop. Uh, so I'm just going to explain the drawing because sometimes my drawings are very minimal. I have very little text. I just have the keywords, uh, which I'll tell you why I do that actually. Because some, I'm not going to go into, because there's something called sketch noting or uh, what do you call it? Uh, sketch notes. And then you have uh, infographics and then you have graphic recording. I don't want to confuse you all that because that's part of visual noting in a way. But what I'm going to focus on is to minimize as much text as possible and visualize as much as possible. So you can see here, visual note taking, uh, you can see up here in the corner here is dual coding. Now, if you can remember kids dictionaries, right? Kids dictionaries usually have a picture and a text and that's what you call dual coding. So you associate the word with the picture and the picture with the word both way and it becomes more memorable. And also if you can personalize it, make it relevant to what you uh, have experienced, it becomes more powerful. And of course, picture they say is more powerful than a thousand words, blah, blah, blah. But they call it picture superiority. When you have a picture of something in your mind, you're visualizing your mind, it becomes more memorable, memorable and also more of your brain is activated in the process. 
and, and the process of taking uh, vision or taking will help you to become more focused. But more important, uh, what I'm going to share with you today is uh, students, of course, use it for learning purposes. Teachers can use it to develop their own uh, content. Like what I'm doing now is my visual notes become my teaching materials. Uh, so you can use it to come, become your teaching materials if it's not too wordy. If it's too wordy, it becomes a bit too much. And also, it's a very powerful tool to solve problems. We're not going to focus so much today about that. But visual note-taking is extremely powerful when you want to solve problems. You just don't write out. You also visualize it. So before I say anything else now, uh, I want you to just comment or ask questions before I move on. So I, I know everybody on the same wavelength because I've talked a bit quite long now. Uh, so it's, it's now back to you in the chat room. Maybe you can share some of the things that you learn now. Or, or, or some things that you are questioning about vision note taking. Uh, and I'll go deeper after this, but I, just, I want to have a little chat with you first to find out, uh, are you still there? <laughs> and uh, what are the things that uh, are you struggling with when it comes to visual note taking? How do one find details of previous webinar? Oh, this is my first. How do I use the computer keyboard or mouse? Okay, the previous webinar is available. I can, that one, you, you get back to me afterwards. Or Irene can share the link here. I, I probably can share the link later. Yeah, that one is no problem. Uh, uh, how do I use the computer keyboard or mouse? Uh, I recommend if you want to do visual note taking with your computer, I don't recommend if you have only a mouse or keyboard, it's quite tough unless you're reusing images, but you're not drawing them then anyway. But if you want to draw, it's better to have some form of pen. Uh, it, the worst case scenario, you can just use, I'll get back to the devices that you can use, but it's better to have something that you draw with. Uh, using a mouse is not very good. It's very difficult. It's very challenging. I said, I thought visual noting was for those inclined to the arts and for the creative people. No, I think this is very important. Vision note taking is actually for everyone. Uh, uh, but of course, if you want to use it, it's up to you. But of course, drawing beautiful is, is okay, what's a stylus? Uh, this is a, let me give you two examples of stylus. Okay, let's just, can you see my camera? Okay, my camera here. Okay, you can see here I got two different options here. You can see this one. This is a uh, Apple Pencil. Okay, this one's very expensive, but you can buy, if you have, if you have money, it's no problem. If you don't have money, uh, I don't recommend it. If you have a lot of money, I recommend it. It's really good. It's Apple Pencil, but it costs quite about 100 plus US dollars. Uh, it's very good. Uh, but if you don't have, you can also buy other styluses. You don't need a fantastic style. This one is for the, uh, this board. You buy this board with this, uh, you probably can get down to 20 US dollars, 25 US dollars. You can actually get a nice board and you can use it to draw. You connect it to the computer and you can draw. Uh, otherwise, you can use um, uh, different tablets. Don't have to be Apple tablet. It can be any tablet as long as you have a drawing app, which I'll get back to you. you can, any drawing app. And you can start drawing your visual notes. I'll share with you some apps that you can use later in this uh, webinar. Okay. 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 There's some. Let's just see what the questions are here. Okay. Uh, Kaur says, I prefer words, but I like to use colors and chunking. Okay. Fine. Okay. Uh, I usually get so upset when my drawings turn out so ugly. <laughs> Zakaria. Okay. Okay. The, the two things here. Uh, if you're not sharing your drawings with anyone, uh, don't worry so much. Don't get so don't get so upset. Just work on. If you're sharing your drawings, other ones, it's more it's more pressure. You have no pressure if you're not sharing. The idea for is for your own notes. We'll get back to this. Huh? But if you, of course, if you want to publish your notes, then it becomes uh, you have to work. But I can teach you how to do drawings. Yesterday, I did a, a video, 24 minutes, how to draw emojis in a few seconds. I'll, I'll, I can share with you the video later. Uh, yeah, so why don't I just share now? <laughs> because somebody was drawing emojis and they did it in, uh, what do you call it? Okay, let me just find that thing. Yeah. I'm going to find you the, uh, let's, uh, so you can draw emojis also. Uh, a lot of things, you can, but the thing is, be patient with your drawings and don't be so self Critical. It takes time, uh, and most people don't like their own work. This is a natural feeling. Everybody, everybody is so upset about their own work. Huh? Uh, let's just see. Here. I just gotta find the link. Okay, this one. Okay, I'm just gonna share with you a link. I'm gonna share with this link here. You can have here. Yeah? This is just to draw faces. Huh? Uh, if you want to. 
Let me just share. Oh, oh, there's the. Thank you, Arian. And this is a webinar. Uh, this this video is uh, how to draw emojis because emojis is very or faces actually emojis. Okay. Okay, sorry, uh, everyone. Okay. Okay, I'm sharing it now. Okay, there. So then you have two videos. Uh, we'll be, we will show some drawings. Don't worry. Today we'll show. Don't worry about your drawings. Okay. 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 So this is visual note taking on a big scale. Let's go deep into how to approach visual note taking. Okay. So in terms of drawing, you can use. You can see here, uh, paper, normal paper. You can no problem. Uh, you can. These are not color pens. We can have color pens if you like colors. It's up to you. If you are doing a whiteboard, you probably need marker pens. And if you're using uh, digital technology, I will, of course, I would recommend if you can, can really afford it. If you have money, it's great. If you don't have, then, but, but it's using a tablet. I've been doing it for two years and all my drawings you see in my presentation are all using, okay, are using, and let me just open that. Is actually using, is using this, is using my, uh, iPad Pro uh, and stylus, but you don't need to have, I, I keep on reminding you, but if you have a tablet, the tool I'm gonna share with you later works on different kind of tablets, but you, have, but you need a stylus, something to draw with. You can hold your hands like this, uh, very important. The cheap stylus, the expensive stylus, uh, but you can get used to both. If you, can, if you can get that, that's great. If you cannot get that, then just use, that's why I say, what I like about drawing and visual note taking, it's scalable. If you cannot afford, you can just have a pen and a paper and you can draw. And you can, some of the most amazing uh, visual notes are not, are just using pen, paper, and some color pencils and so on. You don't need, and you can have, if you want to have a big note, you can have wajong, majong, this huge paper and draw. That's one of the reasons I was very attracted to drawing is that you can encourage people to be more creative, innovative, uh, better learners, and so on, just by, with the power of drawing. And you don't need to have advanced technology, but of course, if you have it, it makes it easier for you. Okay, so you can use all these three examples here. You can use stylus, you can use marker pens or pens, pencils, paper, whiteboard. It's up to you. Even if you do on a whiteboard, you can take a picture of the whiteboard, or you can take a picture of your drawing, and you can post it online. You can still make online materials just from your own drawings on a piece of paper. What I could do now is I could draw on this piece of paper, blah, 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 and I just take a picture with my handphone, and there you have your online visual notes that you're sharing with your students or your, your anyone, uh, your boss, if you have an idea, if you're using for problem solving and so on. So you don't need sophisticated technology, what suits you best. But of course, when you use digital technology, you get benefits, right? One of the benefits I'll share is that you can edit, you can undo, you can have layers and all that. So that helps with, with the digital and your coloring is so fast. So that saves time, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you examples. I'm going to examples. I'm going to show you some of my visual notes. I've already shown you some of my visual notes. So this is an example of a visual note. If you have any comments in the process, you can. Uh, this was done. Uh, I attended a talk by Professor Mushtaq, Employability in the 21st Century. And one thing I found out from my own experience, I used to take visual notes during the talk and then but it becomes, you want to listen to the talk and you want to visualize, uh, unless you're an expert, they have this called, this called graphic recorders that are really good at it. Uh, but I'm not, I'm, I need time to think sometimes what they're saying and, and visualizing it. So I found my best experience is just to scribble, just scribble a piece of paper, the ideas. But the most important when you're listening to someone is to capture the keywords and the key concepts and the content, the text at first. And then think about visualizing later if you cannot. If you can do both at the same time, it's fine. But the most important part in the note-taking process when you're listening to a lecture is to capture the key information first. So what I did is I, I actually visualized at the same time, but I actually didn't finish when I was there, but I finished afterwards. So basically, he talked about employability in the 21st century. Prof. Mushtaq is famous in, in Malaysia and, 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 and overseas. And he is the president at Harriet Watt, at, or CEO or president, I'm not sure, Harriet Watt University, Malaysian campus. So what they're doing there is there are three things to transform the student, right? The first is academic excellence, which every single university in the world does. But also they have made it a requirement to develop emotional intelligence here. And to do emotional intelligence, they have a lot of activities because they want them to be to, to have self-awareness, social awareness, they want to have social relationships and self-management. These skills they want to learn because they feel that emotional intelligence is one of those skills you can see here that robots and artists will struggle will and, and, and it's very much a requirement uh, which is something that 
have a competitive advantage of, of a graduate who has very strong ability and emotional intelligence, okay? And not only that, he also em emphasized happiness, you can see here. So the idea here is to develop happiness in the kids, they need to do things. So they have a lot of projects to help people, help society, uh, go back into the villages and so on. They have a lot of projects to encourage people to be happy and to collaborate, connect and so on. Just being happy like that, you cannot be, you have to do something. One of the best things is gratitude and helping people and setting out missions to do good things make you happy. So they do a lot of that. And that's embedded in their school program. And you notice this vision note. When I took this vision note, if I were to look at it in five to 10 years time, by just looking at these few words, I could speak for maybe half an hour. And that's the power of vision. If you're doing good vision notes, is that with a few words that you visualize, it sticks in your head like water. Because one of the things people often do is they, they remember like crazy for the exam and after the exam is gone. Uh, but what the thing, if you do good vision notes, it sticks for years. Especially you just need to look at it, glimpse at it, boom, you can talk about it. Like this talk, for example. If I didn't take these notes and you, you would just ask me off the cuff and I had 20 pages of scribbles it'd be very difficult for me to summarize but with this vision note i can do that so this is just one example of a vision note this is the last time i did for microsoft but this one is is handwritten uh, before i had my ipad i did with the pen so you can see some examples here uh, and you notice vision noting is a bit different from mind mapping uh, which i'll get back to mind mapping is usually start in the middle and then you have your nodes going here and there which is good but vision noting allows you to start from anywhere it doesn't matter the mode is you yourself understand where the root is, if it has a beginning and end, you decide that. As long as you understand it, your mind will work towards that. This is a note from my, I have a workshop on learning skills, which is called the Super MRT. So what I do is I teach students the most important thing is to focus first, and then I teach them about memory, uh, different ways to improve your memory, and then I teach them smart reading and speed reading, and then I teach them different thinking tools that they need to apply. If they really want to do well in the future and the present, I teach them tools that they actually use in the working world, like design thinking, uh, uh, Scamper, all these different tools, Walt Disney method. Uh, so I expose students to that. So this is one of the workshops I used to do. I still, they still ask me to do, but I'm not so excited about it, but I'm, I'm trying to make it online also. It's called the Super MRT. So it, it embeds all that, including visual note taking. Okay, this is an example of a vision note that, uh, from industry one, to, I'm not gonna go through because this takes too long time. From industry one, two, three, four, five, okay? Uh, so there you can see the flow, right? Because everybody's talking about education is obsessed with Industry 4.0. And I tell them, why are you obsessed with, you should be obsessed beyond 4.0 because we are preparing students for not 4.0, but also beyond. So I try to draw out what will 5.0 based on the research is. And these are some of the things, but I'm not going to go through because this, this I can go on for quite a long time. But here I try to visualize visual, from Industry 1.0 to 5.0, okay? This is just a visual note. Uh, this is about trends in e-learning. I combine into have from OER, virtual reality, augmented reality, flip learning, mobile and blended. But keep in mind, when you take your vision notes, it, it, even if it doesn't, it, unless you're sharing it, as long as it makes sense to you, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to help you to summarize, to visualize, to understand, to see the big picture and capture. That's the point of vision note. If you're making it public, then of course it's supposed to see, help people to understand also. So you can see here different trends. You have gamification and so on. So all I try to capture all the key trends in e-learning in one visual. Uh, okay, and this is about disruptive technology, including Internet of Things. You notice my drawings try to capture things like uh, one of the things I learned about Internet of Things. One of the most powerful things of Internet of Things is the toilet. In the future, when you go to the toilet, it's even scary. You go to the toilet, they'll give you full report after you let go. You'll have a full report about everything about your health. <laughs> so that's going to be one of the interesting of Internet of Things. It's already there, but not many people have it yet. But so people get scared to go to the toilet because uh, but that's not the point. The actual point is check your health condition when you go to the toilet and the toilet will have all the technology to test you. 3D printing, blockchain, big data. So I tried to put that everything in a drawing. So this is just another example of vision notes. I think I love taking vision notes because later I have it there. I can just look at my vision notes and I, I, it's like a quick revision of what I learned instead of going through hundreds of pages of notes and, and it's all a mess. Okay. Okay, let's look at a few more and then we go into the process. And this I tried to draw education 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. What are the key words in, in education? 1.0 is about teaching. Number two is research. Number three is about knowledge economy. And now we're going through the process of innovation, invention economy. It's about innovating and being creative, right? And, the, and, and, and what is education 5.0? And that's for fun. I put a question mark. I couldn't find a word whether it's sustainability or whether it's about, you know, it's about... Uh, 
saving the world. We can see that with COVID now, it's not about all this, it's about innovation. It's about how can we help each other? How can we, just wearing a mask can make such a difference in, in the community. You can just compare to US, for example, to, to Asia, where everybody's wearing a mask, like so scared in Malaysia. I love Malaysia in that sense, everybody's wearing a mask. Then when you watch from CNN, you watch what's happening in US, it's really scary and hardly anybody's wearing a mask. I mean, from what you see on the video, I mean, what you see on the news. So. It's, it's, we're moving to an era where everybody needs to care about everything. If something happens in China or something happens in US or something happens in Finland, it will impact, can impact the whole world. So that's why we're living in a totally different world. And education needs to, to, to actually not just teach about skills, but also about uh, character, about caring. And not just, you, you, want, you don't just want to have a genius. I mean, you, want, you don't have an evil genius. You want to have a genius that actually thinks about caring. So empathy becomes very important. So all these things are changing values and so on. So this is just an example of a drawing. So I, I've showed you some examples, and this is another example, the fusion of drawing has for art and science. Drawing is like Leonardo da Vinci brings together art and, and science. Okay, I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this. And this is STEAM. Instead of STEM, we talked about STEAM now also. It's about infusing art into STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. Okay. Okay, there we go. And then in, in something for teachers to draw, they can use drawing to engage the students. They're falling asleep, right? To engage them, to simplify complexity, which is the key, right? You want to simplify things and just as few visual can simplify a very complex problem. And then of course, if you can inspire, which you can touch the emotion and feeling, you can inspire people to do good things or unfortunately bad things also. But the idea to he can actually inspire people, drawing can do that. Uh, so that's some of the things, okay? And then of course is, is uh, would you prefer leadership that is in bullet form or <laughs> that picture paints a picture for you and visionary leadership provides you a, 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 a mission, a vision that you yourself can picture in your head and the ability to visualize uh, your ideas and so on has become so critical. It's very funny. I did this drawing in 2018 and I actually drew Donald Trump. Yeah, I don't know why, but he's like, <laughs> anyway, visionary leadership. Okay. Uh, so these are some of my drawings. I'm uh, just sharing some, uh, quite a few. So now before I start, you've seen some of my drawings. Maybe have some questions about it before we go into start. How do I approach vision taking from my experience? And there are many ways to do it, but I'm just going to share how I would approach it if you want to do vision note taking. Any questions before we go into deeper and, and start drawing also? Okay, why can't I? Okay. Um, 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 Zaid. Yeah. Just wondering what what state of mind should I be in? Um, um, because you know you are a happy person. So what if I'm not tara tara like you? And so what kind of what kind of mindset, mindset should I have? Yes. Uh, I think uh, uh, there's no. I, if you're talking about mindset for vision note, I don't think there's any specific mindset you need to have. But probably if you're a, a maybe your notes will reflect your mood. So if you're a very sad, I mean, no, I'm not saying you're sad, I'm sure you're a very happy person, but if you're a very angry person, that will reflect probably in your visualization. <laughs> so actually you can see a bit on the personality, maybe my drawings maybe reveal some of my personality. I try to, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a positive person, but my drawings are quite uh, lively and energy and so on. The energy is there. I, I won't say whether I'm happy or sad, but there's a lot of energy in my drawings probably. Um, Okay, uh, Debian Bacha asks, so I can't really answer that question, but there's no specific mood you have to be, but maybe your drawings will reflect your mood more than uh, it will, yeah. So your, so if, you, uh, but it depends. It's, 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 a, it's a, I haven't thought so much about the mood, but it does affect the look of your drawings, of course, and your impact understanding the things you want to learn. Okay, how to use it in a MOOC course. Yeah, vision note taking. Now the two aspects, uh, the best vision notes are always taken by the person itself. Then it becomes personalized. Then it becomes more memorable. And also you're developing the skills. As I said, when you take notes, especially vision notes, you are using the full bloom text on. You're developing those skills that you, you're dreaming about students to have synthesis, analysis, evaluation, uh, uh, application, and understanding, comprehension. All this all being done when you just by taking note taking anyway. Now, how do you apply it in a MOOC? Uh, for example, uh, if, if the teacher wants to do it, so what you can do is that... Uh, you can have a vision note for every topic. Uh, you can have a vision note for the whole course. Or even if you want to have a vision note, you can have a vision note, that's very detailed. For every subtopic, you can have a vision note just to help the students to get a bigger picture, a visual picture of the different aspects of your MOOC course. Uh, you can invite students to, to visualize the course, the notes. Because uh, sometimes what, what vision notes does, it, 
it makes things look so simple. Something so like a, 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 maybe a lecture was so complex. They talk for two hours. I don't understand a thing. And then suddenly you see this visual note, which has about 20, 15, maybe 10 items, which summarizes the whole talk with the drawings. And say, oh, wow, this, I didn't, that's not so much. It's not so overwhelming. Uh, so, so I think uh, if you ask me what I would do is I would have a visual note for every uh, topic at least, and maybe have a vision of for the whole course. Just simplify this. This is the course. It's not going to kill you. This is artificial intelligence. In 10 words, that's artificial intelligence, you know, and that's the base. But then, of course, you need to understand what it is, but that's just the base. Okay. Uh, can I teach me how to draw according to my course content assessment? Uh, the imagination should be there. Uh, okay. Can anyone teach me how to draw according to my course content assessment? Uh, I mean, yeah, you. It's. It depends. I mean, you will definitely know how to draw. The question is whether you are happy with your drawings. Whether it is super bad. Let me get. I'll go through the process first now. And then you will. You better get a clearer picture because I haven't taught you how to get started. Okay. Uh, imagination should be no, no. Everyone has imagination. You just need to imagination. I mean, to 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 visualize your imagination. Everybody has imagination, but of course, creativity is a skill more than something you're born with. Uh, so you have to develop it. Uh, so when I see creative people, I see they've been allowed to express themselves more. Maybe they've tried more. Uh, of course, God has given certain people more abilities than others. There's no doubt. But I think everyone can be creative. Everybody has imagination. But you need to practice it, to practice visualization. When Once you start practicing, give it a one or two weeks or a month, you'll be very creative coming out and visualizing your content, especially Education content is quite easy to visualize with practice. Maybe give it one or two months and you'll be amazing. You'll do just amazing things for your content. Okay. That's, that's what my opinion. Uh, and that's from my own experience myself. And uh, seeing all this. Okay. Okay. Let's just go how to get started. Okay. Let's try this one. Huh? Can anybody guess? Uh, wait. Well, I don't like my chat. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, can anybody fill in the blank here? And who said this? Can you guess? I wish I had a gift. I can give you a gift, but what what happens? Okay, imagination is imagination is more important than. <laughs> imagination is more important than thinking. Uh, I think thinking and imagination, they go together quite well. So I don't think you can imagine without thinking. Ah, Mohan says knowledge. Okay. Imagination is more important than knowledge. And who said that? Can anybody guess who said that? I mean, maybe many people said it, but who's known to have said it? Imagination is more important than knowledge. He's on the picture. I tried to draw him on the picture. There's, there's three people here in the picture. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, the one in the middle didn't say it, but I, this is trying to be, interestingly, is trying to be, uh, it is trying to be Leonardo da Vinci, okay? Leonardo, okay, Dolly says Einstein, yes, Einstein here with his tongue out. Einstein was famous for his tongue out, right? Okay, here's Leonardo da Vinci, and he did Mona Lisa, uh, but what about this? Can, this is like the A plus question in art, huh? Who do, no, it's not easy. What is this? Can anybody know what this is? What is this person doing? I mean, this is not drawing the art, but it's actually representation. There's a famous, okay, the scream. Who drew the scream without Googling? <laughs> if you know that, then you're pretty good. Uh, okay, I'm not even an artist, uh, but that one I know because I come from the country, from the artists who did it. Uh, the famous scream, huh? that's a famous drawing. A lot of emotions. I only know the movie, no idea. It's Edward Munch. <laughs> I say it in Norwegian also, Edward Munch. <laughs> Famous The Scream. I think a lot of people have seen that drawing, but have no idea who did it. Okay. But Mona Lisa, we know, was Leonardo da Vinci. Okay. Okay, this is very important. A lot of time when we talk about visual note taking, uh, we're just putting visuals. Some people just go to image and they copy paste icons and all that. So, <laughs> Chamberlain, no way I've gotten that. Okay, Chamberlain. Okay, this is very important. If you want visuals to be memorable, what are the things you need to do to make a visual memorable? Let's have some fun. If you want to make a visual memorable, if you, if you, if you want to make, uh, let's do an example. If I want to make this pen here, you see, uh, what will I do with this pen to make it memorable? So I don't forget it in 10 years time. Make the, 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 the visual, the image so vivid, 
and exciting that I will never forget it. So what, what do I need to do with this pen to make it that more exciting? Funny, okay, that's okay. Man says funny, yes, that's one example. You can make something funny, then you use more memorable, okay? Color it, okay? So now I say color it, see? So it's very important when you, uh, when you want to visualize, it's not just having a picture. A lot of people just put a picture, say, okay, I'm going to remember it. Visual note taking. Yeah, okay, it's visual note, but you want to make it memorable. And this is very important, okay? Make it different. Make it walk, movement. Yes, Irene. Tell a story, a narrative, Lucy says, okay? So you need to make the visual. Attractive color like red, Akash. Okay, red like Liverpool. <laughs> I'm a Liverpool fan, so I'm happy that we won the league. Anyway, so yes, you can make it a color. Okay, so I'm going to share with you. This is a, a very nice. Uh, I I I learned this the other day. I I actually had a video chat with the four-time uh, champion in memory from Australia. By accident, I got to hook up with him online. We spent about half an hour talking, and he shared with me an acronym which I've been using before, but it was not memorable. It's called Smashing Scope. And by remembering this acronym, it, it has a lot of tips on how to make your visuals or your learning memorable. So let's look at that one, okay? Let's look at that. Okay. Okay, so you can see here, if your visuals can attract your senses, okay? So for example, how can we make, a, if the pen stinks, <laughs> make it smelly, uh, that can attract, because you know, the more senses you activate, what happens? The more memorable, more memorable the thing will be. So if you can act, it's not that you have to have it there. You don't have to smell it. Your imagination can do all that for you. That's the beauty of visual. Sometimes you see something, you see something, for example, uh, uh, I know there's a bakery uh, in, in Malaysia, Roti Boy. Uh, when you go there, it's, the bread smells like, whoa. So even if you just see a picture of that bakery or that bread, you, you, straight away, you can feel the smell. So this is the power of visuals. They can actually activate that sense. So the more senses you can activate in your visuals, the more powerful the memory can become. Uh, and also movement. Uh, somebody already mentioned that. Uh, walking movement. If, you, if your visuals is moving, it can also impact the memory. Association. If, it, if you can associate with something you already know, uh, it can make it more powerful. Uh, attach emotion. Okay. Uh, sexuality, I'm not going to go into that, examples of that, but our memory is fantastic for that. Anything related to sexuality, we have like fantastic memory for that. So if you can do something like that with your memory, uh, it helps a lot. Humor, we talked about that. Of course, your imagination, if you can imagine things that, are, that attract your imagination. Putting numbers to it. And now these days when and I go shopping, I don't even bother remembering. I just remember how many items. I say, okay, I have to go buy seven items. I hope my memory will capture it. I remember seven items, seven items. So until I've got my seven items, I have not remembered everything. So actually attaching a number to your... That's why a lot of articles, a lot of theories always have seven steps, six steps to this. So numbering is also very important. Symbolism, color, as you mentioned, order, the sequence, good. Positive, also negative. They talk about positive and negative images. And exaggeration, like something from small becomes big. So you, you make the drawing big, like this little bug here, it's actually bigger than a human being, exaggeration. So these are some of the things you can do. So it's called, it's an acronym or smashing, smashing scope. <laughs> so, so this is just an example of how to make your uh, learning and visuals more memorable. Because it's, it's not just putting a visual there, it's making them more mer memorable. For you first, and if you're sharing to others, uh, the visuals should be more memorable for others also, hopefully. Uh, Okay, so these are some of the things. I like this uh, acronym and uh, this, because I, I used to have the 12 principles of memory. I covered also storytelling and so on, but I liked it because he has an acronym. So just remember smashing scope and hopefully you can remember some of the things to make your visuals more memorable, okay? Okay, so this is when you do visual note taking, is it for yourself? Like you see this one here for myself? It doesn't matter. So if people say, I cannot draw. It's okay if you're just doing notes for yourself. As long as you're visualizing the things that you want to do, it doesn't have to be nice because you're only showing it to yourself. The idea is to, 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 to strengthen that memory and be creative in the process. That's all you want to do. But if you're doing it to the world, of course, you'll take more time. Like this one here took me about, uh, just to draw, I just redraw it, everything. It took me maybe five to 10 minutes. This one here took me about two, three hours because I had to visualize, I had to think about what I did to the world. So that's different. But what I like about when I do visual note taking only with keywords, it, it automatically becomes teaching materials. It automatically becomes 
assessment. So if, if, I, if a student has this access, they can just ask themselves straight away, what is attention? What do you mean by attention model for motivate learning? What is attention? So these become automatically, you can question them and they become a form of an assessment tool, a self-assessment tool. If you have all the answers here, your brain becomes lazy and information overload and so on. So it's very important sometimes to hide all that. You can have that in your detailed notes, in your vision notes, you're only capturing the essence and the visuals is to help you to, to make it long-term memory and in a, in, a, in a more powerful way, okay? Okay, so you have to ask yourself when vision note taking is sometimes from lectures and sometimes it is from content. It can be from books, it can be from articles, it can be from the web, it can be videos, it can be podcasts, ebooks, and so on. So you have different ways of taking notes. It's not so much different, but taking from a lecture is very structured. You know, you go to the lecture you, or you watch it online, you watch the recording and you take notes. This is more complex when you do research, you still want to take notes, you want to take from books, you want to take from articles and blah, blah, blah. These two processes, but still, you can use vision note taking for both, uh, but that's your starting point, okay. Okay, so this, I did these drawings actually last week. Uh, 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 okay, now looking at this here, this is how I would recommend approaching for, for a practical point. If I'm a researcher, I'm a student, I'm a teacher, this is what I should have. Because a lot of people stop here. They just go to the lecture or they just have access to the book and so on. This is too, uh, too heavy. So let, let's just, just put an example. Huh? Say that your course has about 500 to 1,000 pages of reading materials. Now, what you want to do with note-taking is to cut that down but still cover the same. So say that you have from, we say 500 pages you have to cover in one course. Your notes should be covered, cut down to maybe 50, 60 pages of notes, maybe maximum 100. Then you cut down 20, uh, 80%. And then maybe do some mind mapping. Uh, maybe you stop them, then you're down to 10 pages. And then visual note the same pen, it's visualized. So you have from, say, 500 pages of knowledge that you have or, and skills or, or, or application and case studies that you have, the note taking is supposed to narrow down to so make it more efficient and effective in the learning process. So once you have summarized all that in your notes, can you imagine you have from 1,000 or 500 pages to 10 pages, covers your full course. And of course, sometimes you have to go back, but that is enough for you to do revision. And when you need to, you go back to the details, okay? So what I do in my note taking, I, will sh I won't cover it today, but these are, I don't recommend visual note taking alone. From visual note taking to your detailed content, to your detailed lectures and detailed notes is a big gap. I always recommend what you should do first before you do vision note taking is to capture the basic detailed notes. Uh, I do it through outlining uh, or some, in Malaysia, most students get the PowerPoint slides, they print them out and they actually write on the handouts. <laughs> That's the lazy way, but it's, it's a good way. Uh, you have all, so maybe in a class you have 10 pages of notes or 20 pages, you print out the slides, which is 100 slides or 50 slides. Maybe if you have six slides, per page, maybe you have about 10 pages, say 10 pages of notes, and you write on them, you add additional and so on, and so on. Uh, that's how, how many Malaysians takes the notes. But still, when you go back, if you want to prepare for an exam or you want to memorize all this, it's just too much uh, notes. You need to summarize it. That's where mind mapping and visual notes become extremely powerful because the more you revise the, the, the key aspect, the more memorable it become. Okay, so I, 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 I did three note-taking methods are very effective. Outlining, which is most people do. I, I didn't put, uh, what do you call it? Full notes, which is basically sentences, but that's, I don't want to cover that. Charting, handouts, Cornell method. Uh, this is actually a very good method. I might just cover for five minutes. Do you know what the, corn, does anybody know what the Cornell method is for note-taking? Does anybody use the Cornell method? Does anybody use the Cornell method? Okay, I will share with you, it's an interesting method. I haven't used it that much, but uh, I've tried it. It seems interesting, okay, nobody knows, okay. But you can, after this workshop, you just Google it, there's a lot of videos on how to do the Cornell method, okay? Let me just share with you since you don't know. I'll spend two, three minutes so you know what the Cornell method is, okay? Okay. Okay, so the thing is note-taking will always, actually, people think it's wasting time, but note-taking, if you do it effectively, it saves time, it boosts your recall, and you make a deeper understanding of the subject matter. Okay, so the Cornell method, okay? Uh, so I'm just gonna share with you quickly what the Cornell method is, okay? So this is here, you can see here, 
uh, what in economy method what they do is they divide the paper so if you have a piece of paper or a book you have of course the topic title and date you take notes here you divide the paper you have here the summary notes you have here the cues main ideas keywords so what you do is when during class you just take the notes here you take the notes whether you want it a sentence form or, or, or maybe just concise it's up to you you take your notes here and then either during class or after class you start extracting the keywords and 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 so on here so you have it here or maybe the key questions you put here and it, it, you don't have to have this for every page but at the the last page you should have to have a you allocate the idea here is to allocate space because sometimes people just start writing and then the teacher says something you have no, not enough space on the page and so on you get really stressed out here's to allocate space for doing things that makes it more powerful okay so let me just show an example because you might get confused i'm just gonna skip this i'm just gonna show an example of what it might look like so this is an example of a uh, cornell method so you see here they're taking the full notes here and then they have maybe some key questions or key points here so what they can do and then they have the summary here so what you can do which is very interesting you can make it as an assessment tool i could cover this part i can just cover it and then ask these questions and if i don't know then i check again so you can actually use it as an assessment tool the corner method is quite interesting method it's been taught uh, many places uh, the only thing i don't like about the corner method is sometimes you waste a bit of paper because you might not be writing much here because not everywhere is a summary and and, and this side so you have very little space to take notes some people say that but i like it in the sense that we take care after the lecture, maybe during you, you extract the key questions. So it's together, it's connected. The key questions and the key points are connected with the detailed notes and so on. So this is a very good way to take notes, the corner method. Uh, whether you want to call the corner method or not, but it's, what I like about it is allocate space to extract things from your, your, your detailed notes, including the summary and the key points and the questions and so on. So this is an example of corner method. So by looking at this, you said, no, no. Would, if you're interested to know more about the Cornell method, there's a lot of videos. You just need to Google Cornell method and you'll find tons of videos and how uh, maybe your students, because some of your students struggle taking notes and doing it effectively. And if you are teaching very structured, it's okay. But if you're teaching very high end there, this will be very useful for your students when they take notes. They'll have space to extract key points and so on. So did you find the Cornell method interesting? <laughs> okay, so that's the Cornell method. I'll show the last slide again. Yes, okay. I'm going to show the last slide again. Let me just move here. So these are some of the things. When in any lecture situation, prose, organized, systematic, easy format for pulling up major concepts and ideas, simple and efficient, do it right in the first place, right? Uh, pages need to be prepared before lecture. You need to prepare because you need to align to line the pages and so on. If you have a line, um, what do you call it? Line pages is quite straightforward. Uh, so the, the negative part is, yeah, the pages need to prepare, but also the space. I have an issue with the space. So some, sometimes you feel that a lot of space is not being used uh, if, if you don't use this wisely. Okay, okay. So, so this is the Cornell method in a nutshell, but you need to watch videos on this if you want to really understand it. But it's an interesting method. This is one of the note methods I recommend to take before you do vision note taking. Because vision note taking is like, a, it's like the big picture. It's like the puzzle, the big picture of the rest. Okay, you don't think. Okay. Uh, okay, the charting method, I'm not going to spend much time, but this is medicine, we do that a lot, because I, I worked in a medicine university, a medical university for seven years. Uh, the charting method is, um, when you have a lot of categories, you, you chart the information into categories. Uh, it's very like pros and cons, uh, the, especially like medicine, you have the different kind of medicines, and then you have the pros and the cons and the impacts and, the, and so on. Uh, I, I, I did actually, I did my own here. I compare the different methods, Cornell, charting, and mapping. They have the description, when, pros, cons, and how. So this is an example of categories. Sometimes you need to do your notes in this format if it has a lot of categories. It's a good way of taking notes. So this is the charting method. So if students know how to do the outlining method, the charting method, and the Cornell method, they have a good enough methods to just to cap, I mean, the other tools, but these tools are good enough to just take the detailed notes. Because I think you have to take some form of detailed notes. You don't want to depend on the full lecture, which is just too much to re, if you have to rewatch the lecture again and again. Okay. And the mapping method, uh, mind mapping is, 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 is very common. Uh, I'm not, uh, there's a lot of videos on how to do mind mapping. Uh, vision noting is, mind mapping is one form of vision note taking. The, the difference between mind mapping and vision note taking I mean, vision note, one, as I said, one aspect of vision note taking is mind mapping, but 
in mind mapping, they say that you can visualize, you can have uh, drawings, or you don't need to have drawings. You could, it's up to you, it's optional. Uh, but vision note is not optional. You, you, you're supposed to visualize everything you have, as much, the keywords and the key concepts, it needs to be visualized if you want to make it memorable. But what I like about mind mapping, it's just very powerful, is to organize information and, and, and extract the keywords and see how they're connected and aligned and, and so on, how they are related to each other, which is really powerful in mind mapping. I think that's where I, I would use mind mapping. I would actually use mind mapping in the, in, that's why if you notice my uh, thing, I just want to go back to that uh, first one. Let's just go back. Yeah? I just want to show you. I, I, this is what I would do. If I want to, to take a note, a real good note, uh, I will do like this. Let me just go back here. Yeah? Okay. This is what I will do. I would listen to a lecture. I will use one of these just to scribble the key points and information. If I have the slides, then I just maybe scribble on the handouts. And I will scribble a nice, quick mind map. Because I... The key here is you want to extract the key, every, all the key information, what the key concepts, key ideas, key content you want to capture, which I do in a quick mind map. And then once I have the keywords, I will do the visual note. Because you don't want to do that. You, when you start doing all the detailed visual note, you want to have, make sure you have all the key information. And if you go through this process, you will definitely have the, for your teach, if you, especially if you're using it for teaching tool, you'll capture all the keywords, okay? Okay. Uh, okay. Let me just, I'm just gonna, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna go to visual note taking, which is, uh, we got another, I'll give you 20 minutes now. We talk about visual note, how do I recommend to approach it? So any more questions regarding mind mapping and visual note, uh, mind mapping, charting method and Cornell? Anything before I go to visual, how I would approach to, to actually do visual note taking? So far, so good. Concept mapping is different. Yes, I, I like concept mapping. Concept mapping, and they have different process mapping. They're different. Uh, my mapping is one way of mapping out information. Uh, true. Okay. Okay. I, I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to go too much into mapping. I there's got different between my map. The problem with if you ask me, my mapping is very. You have to start in the middle, and it goes out. Process mapping. Is 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 uh, this different kind of, of mapping? It can be comparison mapping. It can be. I don't want to go into detail because this this workshop is not about mind mapping. It's about vision note taking. But uh, maybe you can ask me that question later uh, through the Facebook or something. Then we can discuss the difference in process mapping, and I mean mind mapping and concept mapping. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Because huh? that's that is, is going okay. But it's interesting, yeah. But I'm not a big fan of mind mapping. I'm like, I, I don't like the word mind mapping because it's Tony Bozan, which is fine. But my mapping information is so much more than just mind mapping. Okay. So this is what I will do. Okay. Now we're going to visual note taking. Okay. So the first thing I would do is, uh, let me just show. I will, before I want to spend my time doing visual noting, I will capture the keywords or the key concepts, key ideas. This is capturing first. Don't think of people think about, I mean, you can do it. If you do everything in one, it, it becomes very tiring. It's very stressful uh, for beginners. If you're an expert, you can do everything in one, but this is what I recommend if you're a beginner. Before even think about the, creating this nice visual note, capture the, all the key information, uh, the key words, because you don't want to have too much content because then it becomes less memorable and as you just want to capture it because that you already have in your notes. You don't have to have all the details. Capturing the keywords, that's number one. And once you've captured the keywords, you can decide on the layout, which we'll talk about now. There's so many different layouts. Mind mapping is one layout. You have a uh, popcorn method. You have different ways of laying out the content. I'll show you some examples, but it's unlimited. It's up to your creativity. As long as you connecting it in a way that makes sense to you and the people reading it, is good enough. You don't have to follow, it has to start in the middle and so on. That's what I love about uh, visual note taking. So, but once, if you don't know what you're gonna put into your visual note and you think about layout, it becomes very difficult because then you might struggle with putting things in. So I always say capture the keywords. Once you know how many keywords and what it is, then it's very easy to choose the layout that you want. Okay, and then you, next thing is to put the header. Now you put, add the header to your vision note and then you start adding the keywords which you're in your layout, because you've already done the layout, right? And then you add the visuals. 
because uh, then you start visualizing and then you add the connector. So you, these things, these two here, you can do together, visual and then connect visual. I recommend putting the keywords first into your uh, visual note, because then you know what, how much space you have for the visuals and so on. Add the keywords, okay? So I've told you now this, okay? Now let's have a guessing game, huh? I'm going to take away this one. Okay, what's the first one? What is the first thing you, you will do? <laughs> In the chat. What's the first thing you, based on what I said, what's the first thing that you should do? Capturing, okay. Okay, let's just put this here. Capturing, okay. What's the second thing you should do? <laughs> so now you capture the keywords, right? You have it already, good. What's the sec second thing you should do? Ah, so now you know the layout, right? Now you have some more, so you put the layout, okay. What's the next one? Now you have the layout, what do you do next? Come on, what do you do next? <laughs> Header, okay. You can put the content also, but header is good to put the header because you know where the header is because that's something that you want to have nicely. It can, be, it can be on the top, it can be in the middle, it can be anywhere, but you, start, you know where the header is, okay? And then the next, what's the next? Number four, the keywords. Now, now you just put the keywords in. I'm, I'm showing you how it's done later. And then number fifth, after keywords, what do you do? Ah, you put the visuals, okay? And then the last one, Actually, visual and connect, you can do together, the connectors. Yeah. This is, I'm not saying you have to follow this process. I used to just do everything at one time, but I found this the most efficient way of doing it for me. Especially if you're using digital technology and if, also if you're using pen, you don't want to do it a hundred times. You want to get it right. Okay, somebody raised their hand, but please just ask in the chat box. I think if you use video, it, it slows down the process a bit. Ask, if you have any questions, ask in the chat box. Uh, there are many ways of doing, oh, let me just change. Let me just change something. I put number four. See, I didn't update this one. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, any questions on the... So, repeat. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Oh, it's my chat. My chat keeps on running away from me. Okay, so you, had, so you guessed correct. So if you follow this uh, formula, which I, I took some time to figure out, I read about it also, but I found this, especially if you're doing digitally, and we'll talk about those who are doing digitally, uh, always use layers. Huh? If you use layers, it's easy to change, especially put layers for the keywords, layers for the each image, have a different layer, so you can move about later if you want to re remove some. So layers is very important if you're doing digital uh, note taking. I don't think we have time to go through digital note thinking because of the, we, we lost half an hour. Any questions before we, uh, I'll show you some layouts and then we will we'll go deep into it. Can you draw any hands on using whiteboard? Uh, can you, what do you mean? You want me to show now how to, uh, Oh, you want me to do live? But the thing is, I, I, I couldn't connect my iPad uh, with the thing. Uh, yeah, we can, uh, we don't have time at the moment. Uh, can you draw any hand on using whiteboard or give any link? I, I will give you later, I have on my, uh, I, I haven't done actually a, 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 a I don't have a, a full, at the moment I don't have, which I video recorded from, I'm going to do, uh, this one I did last night, I prepared this last night. I can do a, a short one how, I haven't done a video on that, uh, on hands-on using a whiteboard. Uh, you're talking about a whiteboard, a digital whiteboard or a normal whiteboard? Physical whiteboard. But if you're gonna do visual note taking, I think the easiest to do either on paper or you do it digitally using an iPad and so on. Uh, Okay, okay. I'll get back to you, but I, I need to create, I myself need to create a video on that going through the process because I haven't, I still have my ways of doing it. I'm still, this is very recent. I came up with uh, the process of doing it based on my own experience. I thought about it because sometimes I always, hey, why I'll do this, I'll put keywords and suddenly add another keyword, I'll, but now a bit, bit more structured. Okay. So different layouts. I just want to show you different layouts. Huh? Uh, you can see here, uh, we talked about the, the mind mapping, right? Uh, so one visual note thing is you can do like a mind map, but try to have visuals for every keyword. 
Uh, you can divide the page into two, and then you can write this way, I mean, downwards or sideways up to you. you can, or you can do the pop-up method. A popcorn method uh, is more like, if something is not structured, they're just telling stories and so on, it doesn't matter where they are, you can use the popcorn method. So you have little bubbles of key facts or something that, yeah, but it's not necessarily related, not necessarily connected, the popcorn method is very good. Or maybe you wanna divide into three, or like what I did in the, in the drawing, four, it's up to you. Huh? These are just some examples. Or you can have more creative like this, if it's a process, or you can have it like a, a adventure storyline, or you can go like this, this is up to you. Or you can divide it into this, this is actually, uh, I did the four downwards, but you could have, I could have done the ARCS. I could have gone that way also. Uh, uh, or it can be like droplets, or it can be, if it's uh, conversational, it can be conversational. Or it can be like a comic cartoon style, or it can be in terms of circles, if it's related, like molecules or something. It's, or you can have it like a puzzle. These are just some examples. It's really unlimited. Or you can have it something like those bar charts and so on. Or you can have like a roadmap. Or you can have it like a, a, a maze. You know, it's up to you. But these are just some examples to open your mind on how the layout can be for your visual notes. It's it's really fun. That's why I talk about and when I say in my pro, in my introduction is it's the most powerful uh, what do you call note taking tool to to and awaken your creative mindset because you, you you really like mind mapping is always start in the middle going here yeah, you're like exploring different ways to connect as long as it makes sense you have some kind of sequence it makes sense to you and the and whoever is watching it it's good enough it allows that freedom of flexibility and creativity okay so again i'm just showing some examples here of my notes you can see here uh, this is a uh, i have cash these are things that students should learn in school knowledge attitude skills and habits to see the flow doesn't have to be that way, but I just, because here we're talking about cash, right? That if you remember the word cash, it's knowledge, attitude, skills. Because usually in universities and schools, they learn knowledge, they learn skills. Sometimes they learn attitudes. But how many develop good habits in, in the schools? Anyways? Focus on habit creation. Like, for example, the exam method. Is the exam method often encourages cramming. The attitude of, uh, I'm not going to prepare until the last few days. I'm not saying encourages it does the of course you always recommend to study from the beginning but examination based ex, uh, courses is very much encouraging people to study in the last moment because the exams you only have exams and maybe one assignment so how do you develop habits good habits that you're always trying to work and doing your best all the time instead of just doing it at the end so this habit formation is something that universities need to figure out also and students develop good habits so when they start working they're more proactive and so on and, and work collaborative and so on so this is a very nice one I learned, I came across and I drew it. I like when I come across interesting tasks, I try to draw it out. This is different exercise you can use to increase your blood, oxygen and nutrition and so on, okay? And this is gamification, sleep. These are just some examples, but I want to go more to Q&A now. Huh? Okay. Even here, uh, I have the whole process for students when I teach uh, super MRT, active learning. What students should do before class, what students should do during class, and what students should do after class. If they do all this, they can do very well. Okay, and then there's another one. Foc and this is very important for your drawing. Eh? Somebody say, I cannot draw. Focus on your progress. Because if you start comparing with other people, it's very difficult to improve because you're putting too much pressure on yourself. It's good to compare, but what drives you is your progress. That you, If you make some progress, enjoy the moment, celebrate the moment. Like if, you, if you're starting to draw today, don't expect to draw fantastic things the first day. Focus on your progress, you make little progress. Little by little, you'll be good as, good as me, even better than me and have your own style and so on. So don't be discouraged because at this moment, you cannot draw. Maybe it's because you haven't tried enough, you haven't been exposed enough. Okay, uh, you only have another 10, five minutes, huh? But let's have some fun, huh? I was supposed to teach you, if I had another half an hour, I would be able to teach you this, how to draw a face, how to draw a hand, how to draw a stick figure, and how to we, draw, yeah. Zaid. Yeah. We, we still have time. The, the room is open for another uh, one hour. If we want okay. to go on, if people want to go on, uh, but okay. I know you're busy. No, it's not busy. I, I, I just need to do my prayers, but uh, okay. we can go on okay. another half an hour, <laughs> half an hour we can. <laughs> okay. I'm over because I'm Muslim. So, but I, 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 I can go. If, if people have another half an hour, uh, we can go another half an hour. It's okay. Uh, but let's do this uh, exercise. Uh, I want you to draw any face. It can be an emoji or it can be somebody's face. I want you to draw a stick figure. I want you to draw a hand. If you can draw a hand. 
and maybe a rocket. If you find rocket difficult, maybe draw a robot. Uh, so if you, I give you two minutes, can that? Can you draw that? Because in, in teaching learning, you need to draw fast also. Try to draw that in two minutes. You divide your page into four and you try to draw a face, a hand, a stick figure and a rocket. Let's do that for another two minutes, three minutes. And then after this, we can share our drawings. Let's see how. I just drew something. Okay. This is not a drawing contest. It has to be so fantastic. Is because sometimes when you draw on a whiteboard, for example, if you're just drawing a whiteboard, it's simple drawings, very simple drawings. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Let's do the video thing again. Uh, let's see. Anybody want to share their drawing? <laughs> I'll just share. <laughs> uh. Okay. Oh, how did my camera is not so? Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, Irena. People are not so, okay. Lucy, let's see. Uh, wow, I like your stick figure. Very nice. And your ro rocket going straight up. Mine is going sideways. <laughs> okay. But, okay, let's see. Let's see. I like Irina, she really small page. Huh? She <laughs> you, you're drawn together, it's very nice. You, you have actually storytelling, you've done storytelling in one shot. Zakia is using her nice uh, Microsoft. Is that a Microsoft or? Microsoft tablet, what kind of tablet is that? It is iPad. iPad, okay, nice. iPad Pro? Yes, iPad Pro. <laughs> okay, very nice. Uh, I, I go low tech now, today I just go low tech. Okay, Chamberlain, very nice Chamberlain. Uh, okay, so again, we have the, the regulars that uh, and now people are running away scared. <laughs> okay, so you can see here, uh, these are so I'm going to teach you how to draw some of these things now in the next uh, five to ten minutes, uh, how to, to practice them and different examples on the and so on. Okay, so thanks for participating in the little drawing thing. Uh, okay, so one of the things that you need to do. Uh, I haven't started sharing, so let me just share my screen, sorry. Uh, am I sharing? No, not yet, okay. Uh, one of the things that is very important is to develop your own visual vocabulary. Can you see my screen or not? Let's just get that. I remember I, I once I talked for 10 minutes and no, nobody told me I, that nobody could see my screen, so. Yes, okay, okay. Okay. Yes, we see your screen, always. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> So you need to develop your own visual vocabulary um, uh, and repetition is all you practice. Uh, some people what they do is if you're doing digitally, you can create your own images and you can always reuse them if you're, if you're developing your, for teaching and purposes. Teaching and purposes you can, so what you need to identify in your subject matter, in your field, if you're chemistry or biology, typical things that you would like to have visuals on and, and how to integrate into them. But this is something I, I, I always emphasize. If you wanna be, have fun with drawing, is something called learner graphic memory. 
is that you look at things that you want to draw and you draw it maybe five to 10 times, it becomes part of your internal memory. Uh, so what I've done, I, I've learned to draw many things, everything from Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, to spaceships, to cars, whatever. So you have all these items. So when you're teaching as a teacher, anytime you're, whether you're in front of a student with a piece of paper or your whiteboard or your digital technology, you, when you're talking about something and you want, even you don't even have the slides, you can just go straight and start drawing them. And that's right. So in, otherwise you simplify, I, I wrote down here, simplifying anything and strategically drawing it from memory. And this, you can learn how to draw anything because everything is based, I, I don't talk about today, but everything is based on lines and dots. It's just strategic. Like for example, this teddy bear, I always start from here, the circle dot and then the eyes and then the eyebrows and boom. And I can draw that from any time, that teddy bear or Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Garfield from memory. But in your case, maybe if you're doing biology, it's drawing the hand or maybe the heart, or the liver, the lung. If you're teaching business, maybe it's drawing money, it's drawing a house, how to connect it, you're drawing stick figures, you know. So you have to identify what you need to learn how to draw. You, didn't, you don't need to know how to draw everything, but things relevant to what you teach. That's good enough. Then we talk about drawing for learning and teaching is drawing things relevant to your learning and teaching, okay. So these are some examples of simple drawings that can have so much impact, like danger. I mean, if I ask you to draw this, it's very easy. So if you go on a whiteboard or on your visual note, danger is just this sea and then you have a shark fin. Or risk, maybe a bomb, you learn how to draw a bomb. Idea, typical is the bulb. Maybe you wanna make the bulb more vivid, right? Memorable. Time, maybe a stopwatch. Target, balance, teamwork, roadmap, have a break, usually the coffee cup. Coffee cup. So these are just simple drawings that you can learn, you can draw from memory. And once you, it's like learning a language. When you want to learn a word, there's actually done research on this in medicine, is that if you want to learn a technical medical term, I think you have to repeat it five to seven times over a space period, and then it will stick in long-term memory. And the same with drawing, you, you just, a lot of people just draw once, but if you draw something five to 10 times, huh, and then once a while again, you can draw it anytime. That's when you feel confident about your drawing. You can draw small things. Start small, like simple things like this, and then you go to more complicated stuff, okay? So we're not going to do it today, but it's good to start. Uh, okay, let's skip this one first. Uh, visual alphabet or visual, uh, your own visual vocabulary you need to develop, okay? So what, you, what I recommend after this class, what you do is start writing down things that you would like to draw that's relevant to you, whether it makes you happy or something that you want to draw for teaching and learning purposes. Start identifying. And those are the things you focus on first that's relevant to your field of uh, research or teaching or innovation. And that's when you start. Then you had at least more motivation. I, I said I'm doing medicine. I want to learn how to draw uh, injection, you know. So small things like that. And once you start learning to draw these small things, you got, you got motivated, you feel that you can draw, and then you can go to more complicated things. Like if, if I'm doing anatomy, I start drawing the heart first, mm, not so good. Maybe you want to start with the air or maybe the eyebrow, the eye or the teeth or something. Start small, small things that are very easy to draw and then you, you make it more complicated as you go. But if you want to draw the heart, maybe just one aspect of the heart, not the whole heart and you memorize it and then you build confidence and you keep on doing it. And after a while, you'll be so, oh, this is so easy. And that's why a lot of people, um, uh, I love, uh, especially doctors from India, I know from my university, Indian and Bangladesh, and Pakistan, they're very good in, in, in going to the whiteboard and drawing out the different body parts. And I think that's, they learn it in the medical program. In Malaysia, they don't focus that much on that, that, that students should be able to draw the different body parts, which I think is very critical. If you want to be a good doctor and, and more powerful, impactful emotionally, if you can draw out the different body parts, it's going to make a big impact when you see the patients and so on. Okay, so faces. I'm going to show you a video, pattern recognition. I, I drew these three faces and let's just see how drawing these three faces can be done uh, by actually starting from the same point. Okay, just look. This is using iPad Pro and Apple Pencil. So I like to do pattern recognition and you can see it. I used to do this live in the workshops, but now I'm already recorded, so it's okay now. So you can see here, what I like about this is, when you, from this, 
anybody can do the first part, the nose part, but then they think it's so difficult because they, they see all the completed part. But if when you realize it's just dots and lines put together, it's a matter of practice, you can do all this stuff. But the question is now is not just to create what Walt Disney has done to come up with your own creativity. So once you start learning how to draw many of these cartoons, you can start creating your own because you go, oh, what if I mix this, I mix that and that. So, so now when I, if you ask me, I can draw cartoons all day, different faces and so on, because I've studied so many faces. So I built a vocabulary or a dictionary or a, a database in my mind to combine. And this is using digital technology. Uh, I'm going to speed up this one. It's actually drawing Darth Vader. Uh, okay. 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 Yeah, it's going a bit slow. Let's just, uh, I'm going to skip that. Okay. The, the, it will look like this. I would have drawn this, uh, but it's, it's, we don't want to waste so much time on that. So, so uh, if you look at faces, if you look at this face here, what you can do now is, uh, we just do for fun, you, you just draw nine circles and you can draw nine different face expressions by just changing the eyebrows and the mouth. I just look at this. It's exactly the same, but I'm just changing the mouth and the eyebrows. So if you learn about eyebrows and mouth, you can have nine different face expressions. Okay. So this is a simple way. And when you're teaching and, and learning, even your vision notes, you don't have to have these complicated Mona Lisa kind of faces. You can have simple faces expression, right? So just learning about eyebrows and mouth, you can draw all this stuff. Okay. So let, and you, you can have some fun also. You can, uh, this is very interesting. Maybe we can do one now exercise. You just create, use any shape. You just, uh, what I'm going to, if you just see, if you see my drum, I'm going to start, I just to show you. You see that? Why don't you just draw a bubble, a kind of a bubble shape. And then what we can do is we go through the process. You put ears, you put hair, you put eyes, you put nose, you put mouth, you put color. And if you don't have colors, okay. But before color, you created a face out of just a bubble. So let's just do that just to prove to yourself that you can draw a face very quickly with doing anything. Create a bit funky. You can see a bit funky. Uh, I'm going to do that now, so you see my funky uh, little uh, uh, shape. From that, I'm going to add, next I'm going to add ears, I'm going to add hair, I'm going to add eyes, I'm going to add nose, I'm going to add mouth and see what, let's see what, how creative we can be. Eh? I'll give you one minute, eh? try to do that now. Eh? And then we can do, uh, you can look at, you can see how it's done here, but you don't have to follow what's there, but just to get some idea. I'm going to do it myself also, let's see what I can come up with. This is a very creative process to, to play around with kids. And it's amazing what kids can do by just playing around with crazy shapes. It doesn't have to be something else. I'm doing it now. Let's see what I can come up with. Huh? Let's see what you can come up with. That's more interesting. Me is not so interesting. Actually, mine was okay. Lah. People say don't have imagination. We have a lot of imagination. Okay. Haha, <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, let, let's do a... Can we do... Can Okay, let's... Do I, do I need to stop sharing for everybody to see their screens or I don't need to stop sharing? Can you everybody see everybody else's video? Uh, no. No. Okay, I have to stop sharing. Okay, I'll stop. Yeah, sharing. so that we can all be on the screen okay. here. Mm. Okay, now uh, this is <laughs> from that little funny shape. I created this one. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. Anybody else want to share their masterpiece? <laughs> okay, Dabaya Chamberlain, you've been active, Lucy. Been going on maybe too long. They're exhausted. <laughs> Okay, Lucy. Yeah. Whoa. You draw. Oh, you draw three, four faces. Wow. Very interesting. <laughs> Chamberlain, let's see your masterpiece. Chamberlain, come on. 
Uh, okay. Oh, the, oh, I like it. Square. What is that? Square face. Uh, what kind of facial expression is that? A bit uh, confused. <laughs> Chamberlain. Is he confused? What confused? Spongebob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really confused. Uh, Arima, Arima. Oh, is that? What's on the head? What's that on the head? Is is that uh, long hair or what? <laughs> uh, so. So this is an interesting part. You can come up with your own face. Because sometimes say that you want for your, your vision notes, maybe you want to have one character. You can come up with your own characters. It repeats for every uh, topic. If you do a vision note on every topic, you can have come up with your own character. Uh, and by playing around with shapes, somehow you can come up with your own character. Because I think it's a bit boring if you just reuse something that's already out there. You want to have your own creativity. Let me just share better. Okay. Uh, Okay, that's nice. Uh, very good. Okay. Okay. So this is a good uh, faceify shapes. Huh? So you start with any basic. You don't have to follow this. Shape. This is just basic shapes, but you can make it a bit curvy. Sometimes you want to make it a bit curvy because more elegant. Uh, and then you can have uh, just add the hair and nose and you can come up with some something your own. That's an easy way to come up with faces. Okay. Uh, okay. Figures. Okay. So the, I just show an example how I draw uh, one of the stick figures I draw. Uh, I like to draw with the with the uh, kind of a superhero style. Uh, okay, then you can color. That's one thing I like. Uh, either you can color when you use digital technology. You can either color. I wish I had more time to do today, but not today. But uh, maybe you can have a special class for those who are using uh, tablets uh, on how to draw all this stuff. Uh, on a tablet, okay. So this is just an example. Uh, this is another example. Uh, we, okay, skip this. Okay. So these are the kind of stick figures you can do. So you can see here. I noticed one. I'm not sure which who was the one that drew a stick figure just now, uh, in this way. So the different kind of stick figures. Uh, these are six standard ones that are very popular. Except mine down there is I, I draw it differently now. Different. So you can see some. So why don't we uh, uh, look at these stick figures? Choose one of them and draw, draw a stick figure that has a movement, some kind of movement. Maybe you have two stick figures, fighting or dancing or <laughs> celebrating or collaborating, just for fun. But this is how you learn how to draw stick figures, actually playing around. But what I like about this one here, they have a very popular is Greg's method, okay? Uh, Greg's method is very nice. Uh, uh, I wish I, I don't have the, uh, let me just, what we can do is we have the whiteboard here. Let me see if I can just do the whiteboard here. Uh, Let's just go to the whiteboard. Huh? I'll stop sharing and I'll share a whiteboard. Let's we have a whiteboard here. Uh, let me just do the whiteboard. Uh, where's the okay? Actually, uh, Zaid people can antonate. Uh, antonate. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I'm okay. just showing the the uh, uh, quickly on the whiteboard here. You, everybody sees the whiteboard? Yes, I okay, can. Okay, okay. Yes, so yes. Can, can everybody else draw on this whiteboard? Can right? Yes, we can if they go to view options at the top of their of their screen and there's a drop um, menu and they go to annotate. Okay. And then you get a menu. Okay, somebody's already and drawing. Then you can, I, yes, you can draw. Okay, okay so I'm well, just gonna show it. Okay, what is it? Okay. Okay, why is my lines? Yeah. Oh, you, the, or they're using circle here, okay. Okay, you can the, 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 the stick method is, is like this actually. Uh, this one, this is Greg method. So he has like this, and then you have. Uh... Okay, and then of course the normal stick figure is like this, but this one is. Uh... Uh, okay. And then you have the. I, I usually draw this one. This is a simple one. You just draw two bubbles, and then if you want to have a face. I love all the people, yeah. So you can see. But stick figure is something you have to get used to. But uh, what I usually do when I use digital technology, I use something called the predictive stroke. Because so I'm also, I prefer uh, when stick figures, if you can get nice lines, you can do that with the predictive stroke, uh, which I, I'll share a video how to do that because we don't have time today. Is that you get the perfect, you can draw perfect stick figures. I actually did a drawing on that, a uh, video on that yesterday, 24 minutes. I put it in the chat room. If you go back to the chat room, it's a video on how to draw stick figures. Uh, no, that was not yesterday. So that was a motion. Uh, I have a, a video on stick figures if you want to draw stick figures. 
Okay. So you can see here, somebody is drawing, somebody lying down. This one running, try the four. Is even, this, I like the running here. The look at the speed. I think he's running faster. The green one's running faster than mine. So I'm going to drive one that runs even faster. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, my, okay. Uh, my mouse, okay. So but anyway, so stick figures is there. Uh, you notice the lines, if you use uh, drawing apps, they have something called predictive stroke. So when you draw, it actually straightens your lines. Uh, that's something that can be like this whiteboard in, in, in Zoom. Uh, is is I'm not sure whether you can do that if they have that uh, They have shapes of course, but shapes are not so helpful. You want to be able to draw them. Uh, okay So you can see a lot of nice drawings here. I like this one the, the hands up in the air and then the legs up in the air very nice Yeah Okay, but stick figures are very impactful can be very easy to use and impactful too for your, especially for whiteboard learning, but also for your, I use a lot, if you see my vision notes, a lot of stick figures. I like to use stick figures. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing this one now. Nice drawings, thank you very much for participating. I can't, the thing is I cannot see who, and maybe how do you see who participate? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. I think okay. when you hover so, over it. Oh, that's stick figures. When you hover over it, oh, okay, okay. That's anyway. interesting. I, I have to learn about that that part. Uh, okay, so you can see here. Uh, go back. I'm just going to go back to my. Can you see my screen now? Stick figures. Can you see the stick figure screen? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. 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 So I'm going to go to the softwares now. But I'm just going to cover the stick figures, and we're going to go to the. So I, I'm just <laughs> going to jump to the softwares. Okay. So stick figures, the idea here is, is you learn how to draw stick figures. I, if you just have, you can create your own database or you learn how to, from memory, you can do it during live classes. You can explore your own style. See here, I came up with so many different styles. <laughs> uh, you can design your own collections, which I've done. Uh, you can have cowboy. This, is an, this one I did a few weeks back. I came up with my own nice collection. Uh, uh, and then you can put it into your visual graphics or your visual notes. Uh, this is an example I converted a, a, a presentation slide. I converted into using just stick figures. Uh, just some examples. Okay, skip this. Okay, uh, the hand, we will skip all this, but let's look at tools because we only have 10 more minutes. But these are things you can learn how to draw. Uh, okay, let's just jump this. Okay. Uh, okay, digital drawing. Uh, these are some of the tools that you can use here. Okay. Uh, what I recommend to use, uh, for, <coughs> what I, I be, all if you look at all, I'm literally all. I've only used one tool to draw all my. I'm not saying it's the best tool, but I'm most familiar with it, so I just kept on using it. Is this one? Is Autodesk Sketchbook? This one, Autodesk Sketchbook. Okay. Uh, and now uh, Apple. If you if you using Apple, they recommend to use this one. Let me, this this thing is blocking. Wait, sorry. Uh, they recommend to use this one. Taya Sui Sketches School. They recommend to use this particular uh, tool. Taya Sui. But I'm going to show you uh, quickly Autodesk Sketchbook, uh, which is, uh, I recommend the link. I'll share with the link. But you can actually just Google it. Uh, this one. Uh, maybe I can just put the link in there here. Uh, this one, what I like about this one is it can run on any device. It, it, on your computer, on your phone, on your iPad, the uh, Microsoft, Apple, uh, Google, whatever, Android, it, it runs on all. There's Sketchbook for all of them. So it's a, it's a good tool to start with. It's scalable, it's free, uh, and it's quite powerful. It's quite powerful, okay? Uh, let me just quickly show you what it can do. Uh, what I like most about it is uh, the predictive stroke. Well, this is very important if you, if you very, want to have this perfection. Because most people struggle with drawing for two reasons. One is they don't feel they're creative, okay? That one can be taught, but they don't have a steady hand. Now, predictive stroke will take away that, okay? So, so let me just show you live. Huh? Uh, you see this? This is hand-drawn. And then this is what the technology can do for you. See, when you draw a circle, it straightens out for you. When you draw a line, it straightens the line for you. When you draw curved lines, it will straighten out for you. This is called a predictive stroke. And Sketchbook has it, and most other drawing tools have that, okay? Of course, coloring makes it very easy. So you can do all sorts of coloring, just... Look at it, you can do a nice coloring in, in minutes. And then you can have uh, layers. This is very important. 
uh, I think the, those who do, uh, what do you call it, uh, visual notes, create layers for each uh, text, each image or each drawing have different layers, then you can move about. You can see here, what I'm doing, I can move about things. If, if you don't have layers, you can move, but it becomes very complicated. So that's layers, huh? And okay, symmetry is forget about that. Okay, symmetry talk about symmetry. Okay, I think that's enough for today. We've been going on for two hours, which is great. Uh, I have uh, quite a few uh, summarized. We talked about visual note taking. It's a very powerful tool to uh, make your things so memorable that it becomes unforgettable. <laughs> and also, it's an extremely powerful tool uh, to improve your creative mindset. Okay, I showed you how it's done, the process. Uh, if, if you want to participate in a group, I have a group uh, managing a group called the Learning Innovation Circle, which is about 2,800 people. Uh, there's a lot of creativity going on there, a lot of materials shared there and so on. Not just about vision noting, about everything about teaching and learning and education technology. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, this channel here, you'll have some more videos on a lot of, I have quite a few videos on drawing, uh, especially drawing. So if you want to know about drawing, uh, let me just put in the chat huh? I'll put in the chat. Uh, if you want to know about drawing, there's a few videos there about drawing stick figures and faces and so on. Uh, okay. Uh, and if you want to know about my drawing adventure, uh, not many people know about it, but I actually captured all my drawings since uh, I started drawing at the age of 42. It's all here. So if you want to have that, it's there. And if you want to contact me, you can contact me on Facebook or you can contact me there. Uh, but I think the most important now is I hope you had some idea, the power of visual note taking. Of course, you're not gonna be able to do it just like that. Uh, the, you learn about the process that I go through to, to come up with a visual note. And it's relevant for everyone if you just want to do visualize what you want to remember and make it more creatively attractive to yourself. But it's also very powerful as a teaching tool. You can use it for teaching content. You can use it for assessing yourself, self-assessment. Uh, you can use it for problem solving and so much more. So that's why I hope in this session that I've opened your mind to visual note taking and hopefully from there you can watch other videos, you can explore it in different ways and there are many other people doing it in their own way. So I'm not saying my way is the best way. Uh, there are many ways of doing it. So I think for that, uh, I will pass over to Irene. If any questions, please ask in the chat box. If I've been wrong in any way, I would like to thank the organizer for for organizing this. It was a bit hectic today, but I'm not blaming the organizer at all. Things happen, that's life. Uh, one person in South Africa, one person in Kenya, and one person in Malaysia, uh, something can go wrong and, and that happens. There's no problem. Uh, and so I hope that uh, it has been helpful today. Uh, maybe it's been too fast. Maybe you have not captured by Inshallah, I, I think that you got some idea what vision noting can do uh, and, and maybe how it can be relevant to your life in, in terms of teaching and learning. Uh, maybe you want to have a last question or maybe summarize in one or two words what you have learned. Uh, but I wish you the best in your adventure in teaching and learning or innovation, research, and, and so on. And hopefully it can benefit you in, in some way. Okay. So, Irene. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I think what, what we need to be able to say is that I can draw. I can <laughs> yeah. draw. I can draw. I can draw. And and thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, thank you so much for bringing so much happiness to the Image Africa uh, uh, <laughs> community and family. And and we are always happy to have you. I'm sure we'll think up another topic when you have time. Um, yes, and they can follow you on different Facebook pages that you have. And also, they can also join our Facebook, uh, our Facebook page, which I've shared. And please give us feedback and say what else you'd like to see Zaid do for us, if he has time, that is. Thank you very much, Zaid. Thank you. And uh, from wherever you are, everyone, thank you for joining us. And have a good uh, morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Bye for now. Okay, so so the, we close shop. Huh? <laughs> okay, but thank you very much, Irene, again. So all the best, and uh, uh, but so hopefully after the Corona, we will we'll we'll do something on a on a real life basis <laughs> in the physical world. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm, I'm sure we'll be inviting you uh, to a lot of um, <laughs> physical 
physical places, yes. I'm just joking, I'm just joking. If it happens, it happens. No, 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 it's it's true, it's true. And I'm sure so many other people who've been here um, have seen the potential and, I mean, the the need for this on a face-to-face basis. So I'm sure you'll be invited to a lot of things, yes. Uh, (laughs) Well, even when Corona is there, because I think it's going to be with us for a while, so... We just yeah. need to be careful and stay safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wear the mask. Yes. Keep distance and wear the mask. That's it. Simple. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. Take care so of I other st- people, yes. Yeah. So sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is the challenge to get people out of... You know, it's so easy. Go, so. The easy physical no, classroom is very easy. <laughs> People just leave the classroom, you know, already. You know? <laughs> Sometimes if people are going out for lunch or something, they're still the screen is on. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. I think we'll, we'll just close sometime. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. So are you more confident now, Irene? Are you more confident with your drawing? <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and, and I think I'll also try... Um, I'll also try... Uh, Maybe somebody, if they want to say something, they can also. Chamberlain or something, they want to say something on the video, it's a good time. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can actually, you can all turn on your videos now because there is no presentation. If you want to say something, you can also say something uh, with your video on. So you can, if, if your bandwidth or your uh, data is allowing, you can put on your video and say something. Now we are finished and then we can... Hello. Hello. I think Chamberlain is the only one with the mic. Chamberlain, on. would you like to say something? I don't know what you say. So thank you for thank you. Um <laughs> can we see you? Yeah. Ah, there you are. Um I'm very grateful. Thank you for this um um program. It was really helpful. And I really well, appreciate you. it. I'm really grateful and I will I'd like to have another opportunity like this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your feedback. Uh, very, very nice. Thank you very much. If, and all if, the best. If you join, <laughs> yeah, if you join the Facebook pages, any of them okay. that we okay. shared, can, can you give me one? you'll be able, we've shared in the, in the, in the chat. Huh? Okay. Thank yes, you. you'll be able to meet a lot of, um, and see when we uh, advertise for such opportunities. Okay. So what I to do is, uh... okay. 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 I just want to share the jam board. Somebody asked for the jam board. Okay. Uh, there, there was no activity in the jam board, but okay. people are still drawing here. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, well, I continue to draw in between. I, I, I thought it's fun. <laughs> oh, the jam board is still going on. Yeah, I can see somebody here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's quite interesting. It, it, it's quite nice. And yeah, when, when we say moving, moving pencil, I look for a, a, a photo in the, in the internet. I think people need oh, to I can see Kennedy. The how, how are you, Kennedy? I'm fine. It's Hi, nice, Kennedy. Uh, budget, yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon. Okay, uh, I think he lost his. Hi, hi. Hello, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yeah. we can hear you, Kennedy. Uh, yes. Uh, this is this, this is actually my first class on how to draw. Oh, so, great! Uh, yes, the first time ever. I have never done anything on drawing before, so it's really interesting. And um, I wish to follow up. Uh, I've I've taken your link and um, some of your oh, um, thanks, Facebook. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So I'll follow up and I think I find the class very, very interesting. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, you know, but it's very interesting. Uh, when I first started my drawing workshops, I actually taught no drawing skills per se. I just told them some things to draw and they drew. So the people after my workshop said, I haven't learned anything particular how to draw, but I still can draw. <clears throat> uh, it's actually because it, once you start because we have drawn as a kid, actually, we, we draw as a kid, and we realize we're not drawing for art here. We're just drawing for to to communicate something, yeah. and that's when drawing is not so complicated. But-